everyone. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight for the continuation of our adventure in right. Waterdeep. What <laughs> no, happens if one again. time we accidentally like don't cut the mic before we get started, and then everyone, everyone knows would our know. terrible everyone, secrets? Everyone would know the terrible things you guys say to get everybody getting <laughs> right before we start. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> All right. I well, I hope that we're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna pick right up where we <laughs> left off, everybody. <laughs> I'm really trying to keep the dead time to a minimum on this particular campaign. And so, the dead characters. Not the dead characters. I will not make that promise. I will promise to reduce dead time, but not dead. You characters. said that earlier. I did while you were taking I did a nap in that. between shrimp burgers. <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you all headed up to bed last night in your free room, the shared room amongst all four of you. It was a common room, but it was gifted to you for free here in the Yawning Portal because yesterday you all not only helped break up a bar fight, you also made introductions with your new friend, Volothampagedard. Really, my best friend. <laughs> yeah, your best friend, your president of the fan club. <laughs> Uh, you also helped fight off a troll that clawed its way up out of the portal with a bunch of sturges. Oh, you had a huge knife. You could have cut him up and put him back down. Oh my god, no. No. We're not, we're not doing that. I'm sorry? I hate all of you. I really do. Uh, Dernan, a former adventurer slash the proprietor of the Yawning Portal, was so impressed with your willingness to jump in and help defend from the troll from the depths (laughs) that he offered you guys uh, free room and board for a couple nights until you can get on your feet. This is a disaster. I'm sorry, everybody. (laughs) Okay. Got a troll in the depths. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you all decided to cut him up with the knife. <laughs> yeah, Lydia's crying. We're, we're three minutes into the stream. We're completely off the rails. This was terrible. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys ready? You guys good to go? All right. So we pick up with everybody waking up in the morning yawning, stretching, coming down the stairs to find the yawning portal pretty much empty. There's a handful of drunks left who drank the night away and uh, are clearly just like looking up at you guys with red bloodshot eyes as you all descend the stairs. There's some sleeping in the booth. Yeah, oh, exactly. There's, people, there's one dude who's falling asleep with a mug, like precariously perched, and he just <laughs> takes a sip of it, kind of puts it back down, and seems to fall back to sleep. Uh, and you all come down, and you see uh, Dernan is not here, clearly uh, in bed. And you just see a, a young woman, young half elf woman, long red hair that's like tied up loosely, and a, and a long hair is like down to the small of her back, looking busy. She's kind of cleaning up some of the booths. You see her checking on one of the kind of sleeping patrons, and very, uh, very graciously sort of helping him to his feet and like walking him towards the door. And she sees you all come down, and she says, "Oh, good morning. Uh, Darren left notes that uh, breakfast was on the house for you. So, uh, what can I get you? We've got sausage. We've got eggs. Uh, we've got." Uh, We've got some stew left over from last night, if you're more into something heartier. I think the stew would be good for me. She says, very well. Uh, how about the rest of you? Controversial choice. I shall have the eggs and the sausage, if you please. Uh, and coffee's around? I've never had coffee. My dear. Oh, you've never had coffee? Well, I'll pour you an extra special one. Uh, water, please. Water for you? Yes, of course. And, and how about you? Something hotter than water. Okay. Coffee it is. <coughs> she hurries off towards the back. You hear her exchanging words with someone who kind of gruffly replies. And you guys have the uh, pick of the place. You can pull up at any table you'd like. And you have a few moments before she returns. So, our first adventure today. Yes, I did. You know, this. Don't um, be. None of the above, really. We <coughs> just simply have to find man. Yes. In one of the most dangerous districts in Waterdeep, um, with criminal elements tearing themselves apart and a government in the middle of a political shakeup. But you're right, perhaps he's just sleepy. He could be. He, he could be. Know. He could be. 
I'm excited. I hope we do a good job. Oh, I'm sure that we will. I have no doubt. I was thinking about, I was thinking about it all night. I think we're really going to do a good job. I hope so. That would help her pay quite a bit. Fairly straightforward. We either find him alive and free him, or we find him dead and bring back proof of death. I hope he's alive so he can come back to his best friend. Oh, I agree. I think they share a special connection. Just like me and him have a connection now. A bit like that. Yes. (laughs) Who remembers the name of your first lead for an inspiration? For who we have to go find? For where you're heading to find him. Oh, my the skewered dragon. The skewered dragon it is. There is your inspiration. And quickly... Do you have my note sheet? Here are the inspirations sheet. for you all to give to your fellow players That's around the horn. Not fair, because we all know Sean has a Choking. mind palace. Sean does have a mind palace, and today the mind palace gets rewarded. <laughs> palace isn't what it was. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, uh, the, the woman comes back. She's carrying a tray, has all of your food items on it kind of sets it down and says, um, Dernan seemed to indicate that you all were due to Waterdeep. Is that true? That's absolutely true. She says, wonderful, wonderful. I, I hope you find it uh, to your liking. There's something here for everyone, or so they say. Are you from Waterdeep? Oh, I'm not, but I've been here for some time. How, how long? How much time? Uh, Twenty odd years now, I suppose. Wow. You don't look twenty. Well, thank you. Um, Why were they odd? Oh. Good question. It's water deep. Everything here is odd. I think it's just a parlance of phrase. <laughs> it is that. Pleasure meeting all of you. What was your name? Shaylee. What's Shay- yours? Oh, I'm Enid. Shaylee, that's such a pretty name. Oh, I'm going to write it you. down. She's like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Her, as she smiles, you can kind of see the crow's feet. She's getting a little older, but she's got some of her elven blood that has a very youthful look to her, despite her middle-agedness. Shaley, could one be forgiven for thinking that you know your way quite around Waterdeep? She says, oh, well, maybe not as well as others, but I know a thing or two. Why? What can I do for you? No questions currently, but it's always nice to have a trusted friend who could point us in the right direction in the future. She says, of course, any time. I keep my ear to the ground here, although I mostly work the morning shift, where it's mostly this lot who are... Beyond being talkative. Mm. I'd be happy to assist as I could. In the few walks of shame out of a tavern in. We've shame. all been there. Why are they why are they ashamed? They really aren't. Again, a parlance of phrase, I've never myself been ashamed. One time. She blushes a little bit. She's like, Well, if there's anything else I can do for you, uh, don't hesitate to, to shout for me. Again, my name is Shaley. Yes, Shaley. Have you ever heard of a, a fluent black man? A f- fluent? Yes. Of course, yes. Um, friend of Volo. See him here from time to time. Oh, is Volo here? Is he coming today? Uh, I have no idea what Volo's schedule is. I should send him a letter and ask for his schedule. When was the last time you saw him here? Here? Oh, I don't know. It's been some time. Again, I work the morning shift, so it's rare that I do see him. Uh, the, the rare nights where I come in to enjoy a, a drink. Sometimes he's here with Volo, I know. He's a... Uh, a nice fellow. I don't know him terribly well. Dresses extremely well. Um, I would wager, I guess, that most of his income goes towards his wardrobe. But uh, far be it from me to judge. He seems nice enough, and a uh, friend of Volo's, I suppose, is a friend of mine. He seems like a nice enough fellow. Well, thank you. Of course. A friend of Volo's is a friend of mine, too. So, oh, you're well acquainted with him? Quite well. She's the head of his fan club. Oh, I didn't know he had a fan club. Would you like to join? Maybe, um, do you have a brochure? Yeah, give me one second. <laughs> Perhaps later, after you read the brochure, we'll get to eating. She's like, yes, yeah, of Thank course. I have some chores to tend to. It was a pleasure meeting you all. <laughs> what have you written on it? Enid head of a <laughs> She's like, ah. join now. <laughs> Only one gold. She looks at us. She's like, ah. Certainly worth considering. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning to you all. Good morning. And outside, you can start to hear the gulls. You can start to hear voices outside. You hear horses and wagons being drawn through the streets. And all around you, it feels like the city is waking up. 
breakfast is fine. It's not wonderful food, but it's certainly not the worst food. The Yawning Portal has a reputation to uphold, and they're not going to serve you total garbage. What you got? Do you, um, as a Triton, are you definitely a type of elf? No, not at no, all. No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> That's his story. Kind of, sort of. No. He is a Triton, Triton. I noticed that the two of you last night, you slept for a long time. Yes, that is what I do. Do you. When I'm dressed. Do elves on this plane have a reverie, or is that just where I am from? Um. Everyone is different, especially when you come off of a ship. Sometimes it mess- messes with your sleep schedule. Oh, the stars, probably. Yes. That makes sense. Hmm. I suppose it does. <laughs> <laughs> I sure. always thought it had something to do with the waves. <laughs> oh, yeah. The waves and the stars, they could... I, can, I understand. Now, to our current quest, um... Flynn was rumored to spend most of his money on clothes. Would maybe a high-quality clothier be worth looking into if the uh, skewered dragon does not pan out? I think that's a rather genius idea, clearly more than just brawn. But yes, I'm hopefully the skewered dragon will work out, or we'll at least pick up a trail of some sort. That was our first link, at least, in the place he was last seen. It sounds like it's a bit of a seedy place. We're going to need to be, um, clever. I'm always clever. I can be the cleverest. Oh, no doubt that you can. Though we might not want to come in as if we want to start fan clubs with everybody. As much as that's completely natural for Volo, an accomplished author and artist, these might not take well to that. Well, I, none of them have written books that have been published. True enough. He deserves a fan club. Where are we off to again? Skewered Dragon. The place he was last seen? That's right. And you said it's a city place? Seems to be. Mm. Closer to what we usually expect on Port Call. Enid? Yes? Why don't we craft you a pretend personality for the evening? Okay. How do I wear it? All you have to do is pretend. Is this like when you wanted me to change my name? Exactly. A suggestion, yes. I do have something in my bag. Should you want to do it, I can make you up myself. It's a disguise kit. I think we need a little bit more than that. With the talking and the... What do you have for entertainment in the Feywild? Do you ever have plays of any sort? Music, dancing, magic shows... Anybody pretend to be somebody else? Perhaps tell me the great stories of the heroes of the Fae. I guess. I never really went to those things. Okay. For... For your protection and safety, Mm -hmm. you know, we're always looking out for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're family. Exactly. Absolutely. (laughs) Um... We need to craft you a new personality that you get to pretend to be while we're out. Does that sound exciting? Fun? It could be a new experience. I think what you're trying to say is not everyone here is going to want to be your friend, as unfortunate as it is. Oh, no, but I do understand that something a bit more encompassing could be in mind. There are so many you can choose from. A few tropes and archetypes from all stories. You could be the muscle, the femme fatale. Can I just can I just be Enid, but maybe not start fan clubs? Yes. Okay. I think we should also come up with some... Well, I found four of my best friends, and I don't need to have any more right now, so I will just not accept anyone's friendship until we find Volo's best friend. And then he can be my friend. But no one else. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. 
too many best friends can be a problem. But I do think a disguise kit could help. You have a a glow You're blue. about you. We are all blue, in fact. I thought it might be a nice device to get into character, but... I've just never seen one of you. I've never seen one of you. <laughs> How much have you seen here? Well, I've seen very small people and very small and stout people. I've seen you have horns. I've That's seen that now. Um, you are also blue, so... Okay, green, green. Mostly. I would like to note that one may think that all my kind are like me, but let me assure you that there are no others like me. Only me. It's of course. That wasn't in question. I just want to clear the air. Oh, I think I've got your card quite clear. I think you do too. That being said, um, we are wasting daylight. I think we are all well aware that we need to be careful here. Um, and we all are looking out for each other. I do not think too much would come of just a CD bar we can just walk away. Perhaps. You'd be surprised. I think we all need to stay sharp. Need to be observant. Oh yeah, not to mention that thing when people are watching us. Oh, uh, yes. How do you mean? Uh, I don't know, something weird happened last night. Please enlighten me. <laughs> Apparently we're being watched. Okay. I'm not really sure what, what that meant, but... I think I would lean in far closer. Did you catch by whom? What was that name? They said, that. like, they said so-and-so is watching, like, I think just said Hawkeye he. or something. I think it was just he. This person, he? I don't know it has, if it has anything to do with the warring clusters of criminals or Maybe it's just know. because we stepped in last night with the uh, lady in trouble. That's what I assumed, but we all also spoke to many people. Maybe it has something to do with Bolo? Maybe so. Bolo did say Floon did not have enemies that he knew of, so... Either way, someone's watching us. Multiple people are watching us. If this bad person's watching us, or who knows what they are. And then the person that was in the robes last night. I don't know. We should keep an eye out. But, it does bring up a solid point. The more successful we are as adventurers and the better we get and more proficient, our names will grow. Good. That brings in more money. It also brings in a bit more enemies. Look at my distant great cousin, Nithbis. She has accomplished quite a bit. My kind isn't even treated the same in the past few years, because one, one did something different. Yet they've been handling all sorts of things. The hell's opening up and who knows whatever else. But no, not actually related to Nymphus. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> Narrator. He was not in fact related to Nymphus. <clears throat> I'm all for it. I think we should do it. I'm just saying. But we are searchers of the deep. Find us. Find us. Find us. I like that. It's so much more definitive. And we are successful. Yes, it is. All right, let's get on. Well, that is about, but yes. All right. I have finished the stew. It was okay. Deal. You all head out into the city. You leave the yawning portal and blink a little bit at the sun overhead now. Again, you look up and you can see the wheeling cavalry uh, mounted on griffins and their shining plate mail. Feel a nice sea breeze blowing through, a nice spring weather outside. There's no humidity. Can't help but feel uplifted by the weather. 
As you all head towards the corner of Net Street and Filet Lane, which is where the Skewer Dragon is located, you find yourself going through some twists and turns. You have to stop a couple of times and ask directions. You're just unfamiliar with the, the territory. And you turn a corner. And ahead of you, you can see that the area has been cordoned off by the city guard. Or the city watch, rather. And you can see uh, multiple guardsmen in their green and yellow cloaks. It's, it's these lines on the side. It's basically green, white, yellow. Uh, you see them all kind of standing with spears and a small, a small gathering of bystanders, people looking on. And in the street, you can see blood. Tons of corpses. About a dozen corpses. Humans? Uh, they are all humans from where, from what you can tell. You all are a good, like, 50 feet away. They're at least all tall humanoids that don't have uh, exotic skin colors like blue or green. There are various shades of human colors. I think we're all blue here, so... <clears throat> yeah, everyone's blue. He's green. But I'm just he's, yeah, green. Blue, blue green. boat. Blue boat. Uh, and as you all are watching, you see the sergeant sort of catch your eyes, and he's like, All right, get on. Nothing to see here. And behind him, you can see three individuals on their knees, hands tied behind their back, all of them wearing black cloaks. And scattered all around them are daggers and rapiers. And what do you all do? Do they look like the same type of people that I saw last night? Who They certainly have that same roguish look to them. But it's it's hard to say that they look identical. You don't what well, you don't see are the striking bald heads with eyes tattooed all over them. Wait, no, the person that was talking to me is Thieves Can. Ah, yes. Uh, they certainly look roguish. I'll say that. It doesn't look identical, but you know that that sort of look about them. You could tell they're all kind of lithe. They're all wearing leather armor. Some are dark leather. Some are like black leather. They don't look like they're in plate mail or anything like that. The the skirmish looks like it was probably over rather quickly. Uh, to the officer, I will kind of turn for a moment and then be like, Officer, this looks like a terrible tragedy, and I'm incredibly afraid. Have you caught all of the culprits? Was there any reason why it happened? Should I be afraid while walking at night? <laughs> uh, go ahead and make me a persuasion check. <laughs> That's a 17. All right. He looks at you, kind of chews his cheek a little bit, and he's like, well... If you want the truth, then yes, you should be worried. There is something going on here. This looks to be Xanathar Guild, by the look of it, and Zenterim. They've been shedding a lot of each other's blood lately. Xanathar and Zenterim. That's right. Those are words I don't know. Well, maybe that's for the best, darling. But uh, I wouldn't go anywhere uh, unaccompanied. And I'd mind your own business. Well, I never will go anywhere in a company without my best friends. That's wise. I feel safe in knowing that you're out there. I really, really do. Xanathar's and what? Xanathar's and the Zinterim. And we, these are all criminal factions. You don't really know? Or they're just listed as like groups of people who are fighting each other. That's like, certainly what okay. he just said. Yeah. We, the, you could without a doubt that. heard both of those names yeah, at the bar yeah. fight last night. Okay. What was the um the half work woman? Yagra was her name. So what group? Zantarum, that's what I thought. Zinterim. They didn't say the full name. They said Zen, but And then Zint. sorry to go way back. What was the lady with uh, who I talked to at the bar who was like, Oh, you're Janasi? She was not affiliated with either of those. What she was, was her name though? Her name was Ubaya. Ubaya. Okay. Yeah. She was, she was bald. not affiliated with either of those. She was a cleric, a traveling cleric of um she didn't say. Who seemed to be in? Oh, she specifically say. didn't say. Good, because I can't remember the name. So. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. So he kind of looks back, and now, as you all look amid the guards, you see this short, stout human wearing purple robes, and he's got spectacles on, which are fairly uncommon sight. He's got these little spectacles, and he's looking over, and he's tugging on this white beard that's maybe a couple inches long, and he's he's stepping over the bodies, and he's turning, and he's dictating to a very tall, very gaunt man who is taking notes beside him. And this man is in the garb of the watch, or, yeah, the, the watch, but he also has a black cloak over it, and it's it's seal it's it's connected with a silver shield brooch, and he's sort of very diligently taking notes, but not, he does not seem to interrupt this man. He's just you see him like ah, ah, you can't hear what he's saying, but he's dictating, and the other man is taking notes. 
dictating about the like murder scene. Yeah, he seems to be like a detective. Um, are people kind of like quarantined away from the site? Yeah, they're, they're kept pretty far back, and you you see, you know, there, there's a crowd of maybe thirty people in total. You see, like one kind of noble woman with like white gloves on, kind of covering her face and leaning in and like talking to, you know, some man she's with, and they're sort of discussing, and he's nodding. And other people are more like the dock workers who you'd expect, and just people kind of. Like, oh, oh, oh. Isn't it, um, didn't I read that in Waterdeep, people typically don't walk around in armor and, like, have weapons? You can. It's, there's, it's, there's no ordinances against wearing, uh, armor and weapons in Waterdeep. You just can't, like, bring out your weapon without a fine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, you do see some weapons, not many. Most of the dock workers seem to maybe have a small dagger on their belt, and they're certainly not wearing armor. I'm gonna try to slip through the crowd and get a little bit closer. Okay. Yeah, you can do it no problem. I mean, you know, you're sort of talking to this sergeant who's continuing to talk to Whistler, and you can carry on that conversation, and you're just sort of able to, like, kind of slip away. He seems pretty, like, he's, based on on Whistler's persuasion, he seems eager to kind of talk about the process a little bit, which we can come back to if you want. But yeah, you have no problem slipping away and getting a little bit closer. And you catch eyes with one of the three men who are, they've got their hands, like, bound behind their backs or on their knees, and you can see a couple uh, couple guards behind them with their spears just kind of keeping a close eye on them. One of them kind of locks eyes with you and just gives you this, like, really dirty mug look before he kind of looks down and looks away. What? Can I... Do it look like there's people from both groups, like, getting... That are dead? Arrested? No. All, Only oh, one yep, group. Good question. Made All three of the people being arrested look like they're wearing very similar garb. They're wearing black leather armor with black cloaks on. You see a couple of those bodies, and then some other bodies that don't seem to be dressed the same way. It's a good question. So, if I... I'm going to try and make eye contact with one of the other ones. One of the three that are lined up there? And I'm just going to ask, like, in Thieves' Camp, something similar to, like group question mark like what group or oh okay. alliance i don't know all right you do that and he just kind of looks at you and, and shows that you know he's clearly bound and can't respond but he blinks his eyes a couple times and then grins at you he can move his fingers <laughs> that's what i'm thinking in my head <laughs> yeah but he kind of goes like and grins really nastily at you. Uh, we'll come back to you. You're talking to the sergeant. And I'll be like, ah. And that man over there, he seems quite studious. Is, is he able to solve a crime just by looking at a, a, a scene such as this? He says, Hi. That's Detective Barnabas Blastwind, one of the best, you know. He's been getting involved in this. It seems this is, uh... Well, it's spilling out of the Dark Ward, and as you can imagine, we've got our hands full. I mean, you have an entire city to contend with. Yes, it is a, it is a bit of a thankless job, but <clears throat> we do what we do for the good of the people, as you know. Well, if anybody else won't, allow me to give you a sincere and genuine thank you. He nods his head. Thank you. Uh, certainly makes it all worth it. But anyways, you all should be getting on. This is no place for a lady. Where? He kind of looks for you and sees where she is. She's like, curious, that one. I think that Enid has probably, like, backed up and is not looking at, like, the dead bodies, but just, like, looking at all of the different types of people. Yeah. They're, like, in the crowd. And that's a pretty eclectic collection. But yeah. I also think for Enid, like, seeing a pile of bodies in a street is probably kind of jolting, I would imagine. What do you think? Yeah, which is why she's choosing not to look yeah, at it. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Like uh, blood is still seeping into the cobblestones. Like being in spring, Enid's not going to look at something that's going to make her sick. Yeah, fair enough. At, at that, I mean, I'll I'll head on. Cool. It's all right. You you recede back to the group. All right, you all make your way, kind of find this this alternate path uh, again. As for a couple of directions. Um, you kind of turn another corner. Uh, you're just kind of scanning everything, and, and you're heading down Zastro Street. And you can see these tall, densely packed tenements, leaving most of the neighborhood in shadow now uh, at the ground level. You can see where the light's kind of heading the top, and everything just gets closer in and closer in. You can see that there are street lamps, and some of them seem to be burning with magical flame, but a lot of them have been smashed or the light's somehow stolen or, or, or removed from it. You can smell salt air now. You can hear voices. Voices kind of linger from within these dilapidated buildings that just seem super run down. 
and all of a sudden, sort of ahead of you, you see a, a really strange sight. You see a shop, and hanging outside is a giant stuffed beholder. It's a sphere about this big, with these like tin eye or eight eye stalks coming off of it, with eyes that have clearly been replaced with some glass or something like that. And you can see a big sign that says "Old Zoblob's Shop." And you can see a curtain pulled to the side and a little face just above the windowsill, kind of looking out and watching everything. Where are beholders from? The Underdark. Or elsewhere. I don't think you would you would recognize it. That's what I was wondering. You probably wouldn't recognize it. Who do you think would recognize it? Didn't she read the book though? No, I haven't read all of it. Yeah. It would the be, bee it would, would be, be in, in the there. beginning. It would be in there. The bee would be in the beginning. So yeah, in fact, you could be like, oh, sh- I just read about that. Uh, yeah. In fact, I would. Yeah. Go ahead. I'd probably pull out the book and like take a note and be like, much larger than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and softer. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to take notes on this to send. Uh, I mean, I guess. What's in the book about this creature? Many eyes. The eyes can do different things. They have magic. I see. What's it called? A beholder. Beholder. Interesting. This one doesn't seem to be real. Correction. It seems like it was real and stuffed like taxidermy. Oh, okay. I say stuffed, I don't mean like a stuffed animal. I thought you meant it was like a plush. I mean it's yeah. like taxidermied. Okay. I'm frankly a bit interested, and I'd like to see what this shop is all about. It's not every day you have stuffed creature hanging outside. Especially a stuffed magic creature. Meh. On the ship sometimes, when we caught something really good, stuff it, hang it up. And then sell it later. Sell it later, keep it. Remember the captain's room? Some cracking tentacles and other things. Don't know if they were real, but... Still fun to think. Sure, it's a monolithic creature like that, taken down by a man with a hat like that. Creature like this, so I mean, I would laugh at the hat. <laughs> the silly hat. Oh my gosh, whoever found this thing might be interesting to talk to. I wonder if they've read the book. You could show them. I will. That could be interesting. Should I show him? Is it okay for me to talk? Let's play it by ear. I don't want to be his friend. Well, we can decide that after we hear this out as well. As you approach the shop, you can see just barely through this kind of dirty glass, the face sort of seems to shift a little bit and the curtain suddenly closes. And as you approach, you open the door and billowing, lavender-scented smoke kind of pours out of this shop. And you open it up, and it's a shop of curiosities. We'll talk about a little bit about what's in there. But there's shelves lined with stuff, and every single item that you can see is purple. Everything's purple. The smell of lavender, purple everywhere. I love it. <laughs> and sitting on the counter, cross-legged, looking like he's been there all along, is this deep gnome. He is, like, dark, like, almost ebony, black skin, like that really smooth, like, no no reflection whatsoever, completely hairless, smoking this pipe. I would be like... <laughs> and as you look at him, you can see his cheeks are actually painted with eyes. He's got four eyes on either side and an extra eye on his forehead. And he comes in and uh, he sees you all come in and he lifts his pipe and kind of smiles and he's like, oh, hail, well met. <laughs> come browse the shelves of the most curious curiosity shop in the world. This is Zoblob's and I am Zoblob. Welcome. That is a very interesting name. I chose it for myself. Eden trying to be on loop. <laughs> I don't need you as a friend. <laughs> I, I I'll leave it. you on red. <laughs> Chosen names, far more fitting than given names I've always found. It's like, yeah, I suppose so, just felt a calling. Matter of fact, that old beholder out there used to be called Zoblob. 
inherited the name for myself when I bought this shop. How did Zoblobs. you know his name? Did he tell you? Can they talk? It's not in the book. I don't know what book you're referring to, but no, that one can no longer talk and hasn't been able to for some time. But everyone knows that is Zoblob, and he was at one time a Xanathar, if you'll believe it. Forgive me, as I am from far away. What is a Xanathar? Why did you both just get into Old Southern? <laughs> He's like, takes a couple of puffs. Like, oh, you don't know what a Xanathar is. I'm afraid I don't. I'm hoping you'll enlighten me. He's like, well, that is an old mainstay here in Waterdeep. There is a criminal element, some say. Some say just a collection of folks out to better themselves or find work through alternative means. Anyways, there's always a beholder in charge called, appropriately enough, the Xanathar. The title, really, changes names, changes hands. That's really all there is to it. It's a whole network headed up by a single beholder. The captain? Like a captain. I suppose that's about accurate, yes. And are you a part of this ship, too? Oh, I'm not really a part of it, no. I'm curious about it, interested in the lore, yes. But always felt a kinship with the Beholder for some reason. I can't say why. But I, you know, spent my days in the Underdark, and uh, there's just something about them. They're very capable, you know, very capable magic users. Mm. Is that why you have all the eyes? Ah, oh, I suppose so, yes. It, it really just goes with the shop, I do declare. Do you worry that the criminal group might think that you're involved with well, them? we don't know that they're criminals, as a sense. Could just be a bit more of a union. He well, kind of smiles. I like, that. I like your way of thinking. Uh, you know, that's a good question. I suppose there's the op- opportunity for the Zinterim. You've probably heard of all that ugly business. Thinking I'm caught up in this somehow, but I think they know that old Zoblob's shop is just here to sell trinkets. Why is everything purple? Is that your favorite color? Well, I'm afraid you got me. (laughs) Was it that obvious? I'll laugh and be like... (laughs) (laughs) I'll melt. Doing great. (laughs) And as you all look around, you see all kinds of strange things. You see a purple leather bracer. uh, Seems to be inlaid with arcane glyphs all over it and bronze. You see a folded uh, piece of parchment. Just a list of names. Seems incredibly strange. Any names that I would recognize? Uh, No, certainly not. I mean, as you're kind of thumbing through everything, uh, nothing super crazy. Uh, You see a small purple, but it's iron when you kind of lift it up. It's a treasure chest, and when you open it, it's got teeth lining the rim and teeth lining the bottom, and a tongue kind of pops out. It's like the tongue kind of comes out and recedes back in. And then, Enid, you pick up a purple ivory figure, and you kind of look at it like, oh, that's interesting. And the closer you look at it, it is carved to look exactly like you. And you're like, <laughs> Hey. Find something interesting. Um, yes. Would you look at this? I'll take it. Does it look just like her? It looks just like her. I mean, you're like, interesting. Like, hair is done the same way. Oh. Pardon me, Zablob. How much for this? He's like, oh, that. I'll part with that for one dragon. You've got a deal. Wonderful, wonderful. I'll pay it and be like, I suppose you should keep it. Do you know where you got this? Uh... Traveling old wizard, if I believe. Uh, you know, I will pay for things uh, if they fit my certain criteria. You know, trinkets that are curiosities, interesting. Uh, I do have a color requirement, as you may have noticed. <laughs> but I'm willing to buy anything interesting you come across. As long as it's purple, because that's your favorite color. You, again, have me pegged. Is there anything else I can help you all with? A wizard. Was he purple? No, I'm afraid he was not purple. No. What did he look like? Oh, I can't remember. Was he friendly? I don't remember his demeanor, but he was an Aluskan man, if I remember correctly. 
uh, seemed well traveled. Is there anything else I can help you all with? I do sell uh, potions, uh, should you be in need, uh, and I do keep my eyes open in the neighborhood. Well, both of those sound tempting. You know, a couple of things, it does sound a bit dangerous out there, so perhaps we could buy some healing potions if you had any. Oh, healing potions? Well, I do keep a batch just in case for myself. Of course, it is my private stock. How much gold have you got handy? Because you know the ingredients for Zoblot's healing potions are not easy to come by. I will offer them to you for 40 gold pieces each. Mm, I don't think we're going to pop I think that. it's beyond us for the moment, as we're not quite paid yet, but we'll keep it in mind. I'll tell you all what, then. I'll give you two on the house, but only if you promise to come back and buy more in the future. You will find they are good healing potions, and, not to mention, they aren't that boring blue. Apologies, I only mean in the realm of potions. The blue healing potions that you find everywhere, no, no. Zoblobs. He hops down off the counter and rummages, as you might guess. It produces two small purple potions. You've been most kind. I shall shake on it that I will come back to buy more potions. He's like, oh, wonderful. Sticks his hand out. Amen. And when we do come back, perhaps if you hear anything interesting, I would be all ears. And if we find anything purple and curious, we should be back. Very well. New to Waterdeep, huh? Didn't even know what the Xanathar was. <laughs> Luckily, we ran into you. May I ask what it is you're doing today? You seem like an adventuring party, if I may be so bold. Oh, just searching for somebody missing. Oh, is that a fact? May have been gotten a bit drunk. Oh, May- yeah. Maybe ended up with the wrong person in the house of ill repute. Not that there's anything wrong with that, I would not judge myself. That would be par for the course here in the Dark Ward, as you know. As I did say before, Zoblob does keep his eyes open. Well, this one tends to wear blues, so probably wouldn't have even noticed him. Oh, contraire. I notice every color. What's your second favorite color? I don't reckon I have a second favorite color, but I I do. Okay, that's fine. I do keep my eyes open, and someone wearing all blue would be just as odd as someone wearing all purple. Or someone that had eyes painted on their face. As I said, I'm keeping with the theme of the shop, you know. Bit of a show. Bit of a showman always was. I appreciate it. We're searching for a friend. Are you now? Yes. If you hear of it's a not man, a friend yet. Okay, I will note the distinction. Um... He is known to wear blue with a cape and a black scarf. If you see a man, or have seen a man, blue with a black scarf. I've also got in my notes that he wears pants. Don't know why I wrote that down. As most gentlemen of Waterdeep do. Blue with a black scarf, you say? Hmm. Seems like something's on the tip of my tongue about that individual. Would he by any chance have uh, light-colored hair, maybe red, that stands out against that blue? I think you know exactly who we're talking about. Absolutely. It's like, oh, that is interesting, but unfortunately, I seem to just have a little trouble remembering exactly what I you remember about him. No, it always helps with that. What's that? I find when I look at gold... No. I can somehow remember anything. I find that the clink of two dragons together is a sound that can jostle just about anything uh, free. If only I had that. However, I've just got this. What do you produce? Uh, just like, I don't know. Hold two, on, let me see how gold. gold. Uh, no, I'll produce ten gold. Oh, okay. He kind of looks at that and he's like, oh. How much is a dragon? Look, a one gold. Yeah, oh, wait, wait. Interchangeable terms. Never mind. I didn't. <laughs> no problem. I thought a dragon was like something <laughs> like higher two. than a gold. No, no, no. no. Ten. Interchangeable. <laughs> oh, then never mind. He only yeah. wanted a dragon? He wanted two. two. Oh, yeah. then yeah. <laughs> wait, I'll produce three. <laughs> he looks at that and he's like, oh, interesting. You know, you were correct. The click of those delightful little pieces, and he kind of slides them over, seems to have unlodged something that was stuck in there. I saw your man. 
It was two nights ago, as a matter of fact, just outside the shop, right out here. Looked to be on his way away from uh, one of the drinking establishments that I personally never. So listen. He was not alone. In fact, he was walking with an actual noble, as you may have heard, your man. Dresses as if he were part of the nobility, but, well, put lipstick on a pig, they say. What? (laughs) 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 What's a pig? (laughs) Uh, Farm animal. Okay. I take your point. Anyhow, he was walking with an actual noble. And five men followed closely behind him. Matter of fact, I saw these men, and they jumped him right down the alley. Made off with both of them. I don't know who the men were, but they looked like they might have been Zimperum. I noticed a snake tattoo on one of them. Snake with wings. Tattoo right on his neck. Plain as day. I saw it perfectly. I do have a tendency to keep my eyes open. Many eyes watching... He kind of smiles, and as he does, one by one, like, blink, 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 all the painted eyes blink. Oh. That's just a parlor trick, I'm sure. Well, it has arrested my heart for a moment, so effective. So, Zentrum, both of them have been made off with. A noble and a uh, not-so-noble. That is correct, yes. I wish I could say that that was an uncommon occurrence, but... As you all have noticed, things are not the way they used to be. Thank you. We shall be quickening our pace, I think, to look for our friend. Of course. And thank you again for helping jostle my memory. Uh, how embarrassing that it was. Next time, uh, so slow coming. Your mind gets clogged. There's a special thing you can use to help unclog it. Oh, Cut yeah? some memories right up. It does it now. Yep. <laughs> I'll keep my my ears open for a trinket such as that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start to go walk and be like, one last thing, which direction did they go? Back towards where they came or someplace like, else? Oh, interesting, yes. They headed in fact west. Towards the towards the sea, I suppose. Wish I could tell you where they went from there, I do not know. Of course. Thank you for the purple trinket. Oh, I'll you're very welcome. You. Oh, wonderful. Well, as I said, should you come across anything else that would fit the decor of the shop, please don't hesitate. I will pay top dollar for it. What's his name again? Uh, Zablob. 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 Don't forget to check out my blog. <laughs> Zablob. 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 Zombie. All right, everybody. As we continue the search, I think now is a good time to take a break. When we return, we will be arriving at the skewered dragon on the trail of Floon. Be right back, everybody. Hey everyone, Steven from Castle Mac here. Wanted to take a moment to play this video over the break so that we wouldn't eat up time when we come back so that we can get right back into the role playing that we think you're here for. Uh, wanted to sincerely thank you for being here. It truly means the world for us, really, you guys. Uh, we're overwhelmed by the support that we receive from you all, so truly thank you. Uh, let's get some administrative stuff out of the way. As you may or may not know, you can find us on YouTube. There's a link right down below, uh, below the video. We've got all kinds of links down there. Uh, or you can find us at youtube.com slash C slash Castle Mac. We're searching for Castle Mac. We'll pull it up. Uh, I do my best to get all the videos up within 24 hours of their live stream, so there shouldn't be much of a delay. Usually I'm, I'm faster than that, sometimes uh, just a little bit behind. But every back episode is there, so you can, you can go check them out. Um, Finally, you can find us all on Twitter. That's pretty much where we mostly hang out in the social media world. All of our Twitter handles are visible within the player tags, although we're pretty easy to find. Just do the at Castle Mac and it'll fill out with the six of us. So uh, so give everybody a follow and let's talk D&D. It's pretty much all we want to do all the time. Another link down below you'll see is our band camp. All of our music is completely original. This is done by uh, Castle Mac Andrew, and he's done just a phenomenal job. You can go listen to those tracks individually at our band camp link. Uh, you can also purchase the album if you'd like uh, to, to show him some support. Um, I. He's got more stuff in the pipe, and it's going to be just uh, fantastic. Uh, Finally, we do have a podcast. Speaking of audio, you can find us uh, on iTunes uh, under Castle Mac uh, and other places that good podcasts are found. Um, We're a little bit behind right now, but we're going to be caught up and have all the episodes uh, for your audio pleasure. 
Uh, finally, our Discord. The link is down below again. This has probably been the biggest hit with us. We, we love it so much. Lots of people come and hang out. We've made tons of good friends, lots of new friendships forged there. It's just fantastic. It's a really good community. So we invite all of you to come join us and, and have a good time. Uh, a lot of times after shows, we will hang out in the Discord voice chat so you guys can come and we can all just kind of hang out a little bit. It's a lot of fun. Finally, let's talk about Divine Inspiration. As you've probably seen by now, every 500 bits or subscription equivalent earns our players a divine reroll. We think this is a really fun way of letting the viewers sort of act like they're the gods of the realm. They can subtly guide the actions of the players, whether it's, you know, guiding an arrow or moving a shield over just a hair. Uh, so we really appreciate that. That is the immediate tangible benefit, but do want to talk about, you know, what we do with those bits. We reinvest absolutely every dime we make into the stream, and you can look back at some of our older YouTube videos and see in a very short time we've come a long way. Uh, we, we really use that to pay uh, for our Art. We, we've done tons of uh, artist commissions from overlays to character artwork and we will continue to do so. We think, uh, we, we think artists make this community incredibly vibrant and bring visuals uh, to life. You know, I, I don't think any of this works without some of the wonderful art that people have, have done. Uh, and also equipment. As you probably know by now, uh, if, you've, if you've spent any time with us, we have been making huge improvements to our audio. And that is really our number one focus right now. So we are saving up for a comprehensive audio equipment overhaul. Both Andrew and I have some, some background in recording, um, and, and we are really hoping to make that uh, leaps and bounds better than what it is right now. We're, we're really making do. It's, it's challenging to mic a room full of people with broad dynamics, from whispers to shouts when people roll 20s. Uh, so we are being very thoughtful, and we're really focus on making that as absolutely uh, amazing as we possibly can and so you all are helping us with that uh, every time you donate even a single bit we, we really truly appreciate it okay let's get back to the break we'll see you guys in just a few minutes thank you again for being here it honestly means the world to us so we'll see you soon
right, welcome back, everybody. So, you all have left Zoblob's shop, and you have continued on your way where... Uh, oh, you all wanted to have a moment to, to chit chat. So you are you are rounding some corners. You're going down these narrow streets. You're, you, there's just people kind of eyeballing you strangely everywhere. Everything's kind of cast in shadow again because most of the street lights here have not been well maintained. And you all have a couple of moments before you make it to the skewered dragon. Where do you think he was from? He was so interesting. I believe they're from the Underdark. Wow. A quick note that we need to keep in mind as we've seen two things. What was that noise? Oh, it could have been anything. Rats, probably. Uh, knives being unsheathed. Someone probably knows. Who knows? Could be. So. Oh my god, I heard it again. What we know so far. You can't open it right next to the light. Oh, I'm sorry. Probably so loud. Oh my god. <laughs> sorry for everyone's ears. The Zentrum and Zamathar's Guild. Spilling blood in the streets. Our new friend Yerla was part of the Zentrum. Wait, he's our friend? She, Yerla, the half walk. Yegra. Oh. Yegra, sorry. Yegra. Ah. So, I'm assuming that those with tattoos on their head the other night are Xanathar's guild, as they seem to have said. And the Zentrum, how much do you know about the Zentrum? Um, well, Zablob just said they have associated the sneak with the wings on them. Perhaps so. It could just be a tattoo. The Zentrum are the largest criminal thieves guild in the entire land. Wait, do we know the criminals or not? They are thieves. All rogues. I'm sure some are more cutthroat than others. Some are just looking to unionize. Get a bit of information. Doesn't mean they're criminal. No. But thievery is pretty much universally considered a crime. In some cultures? I'm not saying I have anything against it by any means. I'm just saying they are a thieves' gift. Definitely don't want to... Definitely will not. And they are at war with the Xenathar guild. That I don't know anything about beyond the eyeballs, and that apparently a beholder leads them always. Oh, that's why they have the eyes. Exactly. Mm. Astute. How did his eyes blink like that? Oh, minor magic could be a, uh, actually probably a minor illusion. I bet I could do the same. The people that we saw getting arrested in the street, Mm -hmm. you said they were bald? Uh, they had clothes. They had hoods up, so you're not 100% sure, but they looked... Well, it's hard to say. They were in black. They were all the same. I couldn't tell same. which group they were in. Couldn't tell which group they were in. Okay. So, although you do recall the man blinking at you. I quickly. do remember... Oh. So... I'm not quick with that stuff. If our friend Zublob said that Floon and this noble he left with were set upon by some rogues that seem to be associated with Zentrum. Zentrum. Yes. Um, would it be wrong to mistrust his word a little bit if we walk into a shop because it has a beholder outside of it and he has eyes all over his face? How that mind works. It just... Uh. Yes, exactly. We don't know who we can trust right now. Well, you can trust me. Yes, except for each other. I'll never trust anyone except you. My dear, I don't believe you. (laughs) But I appreciate the sentiment. We are getting a bit embroiled in between something. We do have uh, Yegra as a potential friend here. The beautiful thing about thieves and rogues is they can typically be bought. Unfortunately, we don't have too much money with which to buy anything. We just took... Speak for yourself. Free potions. We did. Not to mention you don't need much money when someone that you happen to know happens to know a lot of other people. That way myself. I... She's being very tricky. I'm not being tricky. 
bit dodgy. Not dodgy. Dodgy. All right, never mind. I like it. Go on. I love your dodginess. I love it too, because you... You're my best friend. Friends in low places are sometimes the best kind of friends. Exactly. Um, if one of my friends is still working um, in Waterdeep and hasn't moved on, could be a useful ally that I trust to get some information from. Mm-hmm. I like it. At least could help out just figuring out which of these factions. Uh, I would love to meet your friend. A friend of mine is a friend of yours. Yes. We do still have Yegra. We helped her in a fight as well, and I healed those wounds. Specific- Doesn't mean she wouldn't lie to you. Oh, not at all. Most likely she would. <laughs> But sometimes lies reveal truth all on their own. Well, if you'd like to take that route, we could. I'm just saying it's another option, a backup plan in case yours. We still have yet to even go into the Skewer Dragon or pursue the route that Floon did and was supposedly seen going down. I'm just saying, it might be useful to at least get everything straight before we start asking more people getting information we don't even know what to do with. Thank you, zombie. Zombie got the, for the sub. Oh, hey, First thank die you, of the night. Appreciate thank that, you, zombie. Thanks, zombie. It's three months in a row. Thank you. Everything we've encountered thus far, we don't know what to do with. True enough. How far is your friend? As close as the nearest dock. That's a the- lead. A detour then before we walk in. I think we need to be quick not to seem affiliated with either. Unless we're around one, then we want to seem that we're affiliated to them, but we're really not. Exactly. However, fellow sailor, no affiliations besides the sea. I like it. I'm a fan. I like it too. All in? Lead the way. She's so smart. She is. Trixie, go ahead and keep an eye out behind our back, if you would. Already doing it. Thank you, my fiendish little cupcake. You hear a clink in your pocket and feel a dragon slide in. How much, Found that. How much gold did we get up front again? It's 15. Uh, 15. 15 each. So you are heading to talk to... Just with my thing, I happen to be able to, like... To, to know sailors? Okay. I mean, I just, like... Through a network of sailory thing. I don't know, it's just some kind of background thing. All right. How about. Well, I'll tell you what. The bar you're going to is a sailor's bar. Basically, so, I can always find like an ally cool. via that network. Got it. So, how about let's, let's just retcon it a little bit and you're like confident that you'll have someone that you can chit chat with at the bar? Is that where? Sp- yeah, because you guys are basically right yeah. there anyway, so. Cool. And, and well, if you like, you're able to, like in sailor's bars and stuff like that, you're able to walk in immediately, like gain respect with people right off the bat. Um, I hope I walk in and they're like, Nami! <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. The skewered dragon. You finally approach it. Looks like a ruin. Both of its front facing windows have been smashed and boarded back up, and a ship's anchor is lodged in the roof, like shattered into the roof. Through the windows, you can see a group of haggard patrons drinking from huge tankards. As you all enter the Ramshackle Tavern, all conversation stops. You know, dead silence, and you hear a creaking of a chair like... The patrons are all human, with a mix of men and women, all of whom look like they're not strangers to a hard day's work. The barkeep big burly woman with uh she's got tattoos on her chin like kind of these like rolling like kind of like go up her jawline they look kind of maori yeah kind of kind of tribal looking she kind of looks up at you and she's just like can i help you and nami you look back and you see a man feet kind of folded up on the table he's sitting back he's nursing a nail and he kind of eyes, like, you guys kind of lock eyes. And you believe you served with him aboard Captain 
was it Alisiana's or was that the ship? Uh, uh, Silvertooth Trap. Silvertooth Trap. Yes, you served together for a time, not long, but you know that he was a pretty capable sailor who uh, who had a bit of a drinking problem and thus was was pretty belligerent. So it wasn't there long, but certainly have that connection. But everyone else is like dead silent, and the barkeep is just like, C- "Can I help you?" <laughs> like kind of confused. Yeah, you could. We could all use a nail. She's like, all right, I'll pour them for you right now. Like, just starts, starts pouring them from, from the tap. I'll take an extra if you don't mind. She's like, whatever you want. Pours another one, kind of plops them down, and they kind of slosh around on the table. And, you know, you, it adds to the smell of stale beer and sweat in this place. And even a little bit of maybe mildew. In fact, you can kind of look up and see stains on the ceiling where it hasn't been kept up. Clearly the place is a complete just garbage heap at this point. And at that, the man unfolds his, his legs and kind of leans forward a little, puts one like arm on the table, and he's kind of eyeing you up. I'll shove it, the extra drink forward in his direction, just kind of give him a look and a little and smile. I, he kind of grabs it and he's like, Tsunami, right? That's right. He's like, <laughs> you remember me? I do. Yeah? Uh, how's the captain doing these days? Haven't heard from her. Yeah. Kind of had a... Don't think I'll hear from her again. Got a bit of a walloping. Yeah. Wouldn't cross her again, but... It's not the first time I've been kicked off a ship. Probably won't be the last. Had the same just... He's like, ah, oh, Goethe, you gave them the... And she's like... He's like, takes another sip and kind of chokes the ale down. As you all take a sip, it's really bad. It's like garbage. It's tastes like, like it's, lime. Tastes like Bud Light Lime filtered through an army sock. Why are they giving us the crap? <laughs> I'll take one and <laughs> move it to my side and slide. Well, this one's quite shot. The bar keeps like, it's kind of smiles. He's like, the hell are you doing in a place like this? Like you've never seen me in a place like this before. She's like, okay, fair point. What are they doing in a place like this? They're my allies. Working together. (laughs) He kind of grins at you. He's like, friends in high places. Met him when I stole her shit. He's like, oh, heard about that. Blue boat, right? <laughs> hey, it's the captain of the blue boat! <laughs> and at that, everyone's like, <laughs> Everyone's kind of like laughing and goofing with each other. And he's like, sure, Torville came in here, told the, sta- told the tale. <laughs> you're damn lucky you're not in the stocks right now. Thanks, <laughs> Alice, for that one. First time I met him in... Ever. And at this, the mood is like immediately, like everyone's immediately like, oh, okay. And like, just kind of go back to their conversation. Or they're like kind of goofing at you. Even Gerda's like, ah, she's like, tell you what, let me swap those for you. Mm. It happened to, oh, I think this one's skunked. She like picks up everyone's ales and pours you all a fresh one. Appreciate it. Hands them back. He's like, I didn't know that was you. <laughs> Blue boat. Mm. I named it. That was her. Wonderful. Thank really you. wish I could have seen that. Told you. Keep a good lot with me. So I guess so. You um, know, it's a difficult thing to just pull a ship out of the harbor. <sighs> wasn't too hard. Had a few drinks with me, though. Yeah. You know how it goes. I know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on having one of the most popular stories of the day down in the dark ward. I suspect people all have heard that tale by now. <laughs> they just haven't associated the names with the deeds. Probably for the best, though. <laughs> oh, Blue Boat. I love it. I love it. Uh, Nami, what can I do for you? I imagine you and your friends with soft hands aren't coming in here to just have a drink mid-morning. Mm, you might be correct. Let's cut the shit. I need to know what's going on with these two factions. And I need to find out from somebody that I feel like I can trust. And I thought I might find someone like that here. It's like, ah. well, I'll tell you all I know, and I don't know much. I try to keep my nose clean, you know. Uh, I've got enough trouble on my hands in my past. 
Yeah. Xanathar's and Sinks, they've been spilling each other's blood for a couple of weeks now. Rumor has it. You remember Lord Neverember? You know who he is? Yeah. We've heard. Okay. Well, here's what I know, and I'm speculating a bit here. Do you remember, were you in Waterdeep when they were, the armies were massing? It was a great time to be a sailor. Tons of equipment was coming in from all over the place. Were you here for that? The armies were massed, the dragons came. I, don't, I, I oh, can't remember. Yeah. Well, never remember, along with, you know, Salos and everyone, went to broker a deal with the metallic dragons. And the dragons, being dragons, laid claim to half of our gold. Our gold. Believe that? It was stolen from us, and to help us, they wanted half of the gold. He broke the deal. Maybe it was good, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. We're still here, and I suppose we have them to thank for it. Maybe. But rumor has it, that's not where he stopped. But a little more of that gold made its way into his pockets. All I know is that the Zints want it, the Xanathar's Guild wants it, and evidently that conflict has spilled into the streets. They, wait, let me get this straight. They are fighting about gold that may or may not exist. There's probably more to the story, but that's as much as I have, I'm afraid. Hmm. Pardon me, my good man. He's like, oh, I'm not a good man. Oh, well, then my very, very bad man. <laughs> he cracks his mouth at that. <laughs> Now, with these rumors, I'm sure they fluctuate as rumors do. Is there any uh, amount that's been suggested on how much of a pile of dragons this is? I've heard everything from a hundred thousand dragons to a million dragons. Hmm. Who knows? Could all be foolishness, I don't know. If he had that money, he'd be retired. No, no, I'm afraid you'd have to put that money somewhere, even if you're a lord. You can't just go walking around with barrels and barrels of dragons. <laughs> That's beside the point, I suppose, for right now. Like I said, that's about the extent of my knowledge about it. I try to avoid those kinds of conversations. Sure, I see them here and there. Zins come in here now and again. There's, a, there's an old warehouse, actually, on Candle Street. It's a recruiting center, I think. But... Uh, Nami, you know I've made plenty of mistakes, so... It's not something I'll be pursuing. Uh, there could be money to be made there, but I'm trying to turn a new leaf, you know. So you you to yourself. Eh, in Sarah's memory too, really. But it's another story. Have you been to Zoblobs? Zoblobs? Oh, well, the old beholder. I don't think I've ever been in. You should go. Yeah. Probably pass, but. Okay, well. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Is that all you're here for? To find out about what's going on between a gang war? What Just are you wanted... doing involved in a gang war anyway, Nami? I thought you were gangfully employed. You were a wonderful sailor. Silvertooth had a thing for you. You were like a daughter to her. Well, things happen. You know. Said some things that I regret now that I'm a little bit older. Yeah. Kind of just never... I don't know, I've had... All children kind of have that with their parents. And you just haven't been able to... Uh, Thanks a little bit. <laughs> Whistler's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I've, um... Guess I'm still not mature enough to, you know, normally apologize and all that, but... Yeah, you should before it's too late. And he kind of clinks a glass. Takes a sip. Don't get involved with those gangs, Nami. Don't want to see you stabbed in the street. It's not the end you deserve. Well, thanks. I, re- I really appreciate that. It's been good to see someone I know. Good to see you, too. Appreciate the, uh, the information that you gave us. We were looking for something else. Oh, the yeah. The reason why we came in here. Um, we have been looking for person that went missing. A friend. Like, the reason okay. we're getting involved in all this. 
ultimately. All right, well, who are you looking for then? You wouldn't be able to miss them, apparently. He likes his bright colors. Bright red hair. Flynn. Yeah. Okay. Sure, I know him. Seems like an all right bloke. Uh, He and his friend, maybe more than friends, I think, seem to frequent this place, probably because it's out of prying eyesight. We mostly keep quiet, largely because Volo's pockets are loose and he tends to buy the ales when he's here, so that makes him a friend of ours, as you know. That nasty-ass shit we just drank? Oh, he buys the better stuff. Gotcha. Sure, they were here. Uh, I guess it's been two nights on now. Why? Is he... You're looking for Floon, specifically? He's missing. Specifically. We had heard that there was a actual noble with him when he went missing. Was there an actual noble that night? Is like, not Oh, you know, now that you now that you mention it, there was. I only remember because I went outside to take a piss. You know, the water closet's broken, like everything here. Uh, yeah, I went out, took me piss right off the front porch there into the cobblestone, and uh, I saw Floon walking away with yeah, some some nobleman. Uh, Oh, but here's the odd thing. Some of those zents I was just talking about, the fellows from the warehouse, they seem to follow him after. I didn't think anything of it, but the fact that you're here asking questions seems like that's pertinent information. Well, that's what I've got for you. He seemed to meet some fella uh, just down the way and was followed by those gentlemen. You can find them there in a warehouse, just an old beat-up warehouse uh, right in Candle Lane. Candle Lane. You can't miss it. I think that answers most of our actual If he's gone missing and the Zinterm are involved, I'd think twice about getting involved with all that, Nami. You know me, I can't turn down gold. Well, then I hope it's a good payment. I hope so, too. I believe so. Thank you, uh... What is your name again? No, go ahead, tell him, Nami. Tomas. Thank you. Uh, Please call him Tomas. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of closed his eyes like yeah. Affectionately. <laughs> they did. They did. You know, you you miss one damn trivia question. And that's, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Tomas. Uh, <laughs> is been missing for quite some time, and from what we have heard, we at least need to confirm or deny certain rumors. Hopefully they have been greatly exaggerated. Well, I won't speak to any rumors, but he was certainly here two nights ago. Left with some nobleman. Couldn't tell who it was. Couldn't care to probably snub his nose at us like they always do. And it was potentially followed by Zinter. I don't know if it was a coincidence that they left at the same time. Couldn't say. Hmm. At the time, thought nothing of it. With your line of questioning, maybe I'm not such a dumbass this time. Not to me, my sweet villain. It's like, <laughs> this guy. I like him. Me too. Good. <laughs> we'll be going. He likes himself too. All right, well, good luck. It was nice running into you. Good to run into you as well. If you see Torville, please give him our best. Oh, Torville, of course we will. To Blue Boat. <laughs> uh, everyone's like, ah! To Blue Boat. To Blue Boat. <laughs> to see blue boat. <laughs> and they're all like, all right, good luck out there. <laughs> everyone's kind of clinking their glasses and having a good chuckle. I guess. I, I think Hedarian would kind of like stand up and leave at that point. I'll push a gold across for our drinks, Mick. If you see Torville, his drink's on me. And Tomas. She nods and she's like, got it. Puts it under. Kind of eyes you guys as you leave and does the like nod as one of you looks back. <laughs> <laughs> like Forrest Gump style. <laughs> oh, God. Um, what time of day is it right now? Uh, it's like noon right now. Noon. I mean, it's you guys left in the morning, had breakfast, walked around Waterdeep a little bit. Mm, breakfast drinks. Around noon. Yeah, you guys have had a, like two ales <laughs> before noon. Nothing wrong with that. That's like normal. For That's me. normal. Sailor's life. Nothing wrong with that. 
Well, it sounds like we have a lead, but it's rather ominous. All signs seem to point towards this warehouse recruitment area. I know we're looking for a tattoo. A tattoo? Or Floon himself. Floon himself would be ideal, but I'm thinking a tattoo might be more likely. Who do you think the, the nobleman was? That's the question I find most fascinating. You think it's a good question? I think it's I think it's one of the most pertinent the questions. The question, Enid. I think, think there's two. Thank you, thank you. One, why is an actual nobleman Shit. meeting with a fop? In all honesty, most people who want to be nobles don't mix with nobles. Sometimes nobles will meet with them to make themselves feel better. Second, why were they abducted? Maybe they wanted his nice clothes. Could be. Could have just been opportunistic. But with this information about Sallow, suppose it's gold. Daggles. Oh, Daggle. Wait. I'm sure Sallow has I'm gold confused. as well. It was Who had the gold? Never Ember. Daggle never Ember. It sounds like the heroes weren't involved in mm. this little scheme, if it's even true. Or Daggle Never Ember's name is one of the best. We've even heard it all the way down in Arm. I've never heard of him. An important person. But I do find it a bit interesting that there are a number of rumors about hidden gold somewhere in Waterdeep. Now, if two factions are looking for this, I bet all of their resources would be going towards it. And the Zentrum don't move on a mark unless they know. Unless it's opportunistic. You're right, could have just been for the clothes. Or the gold they had on them. But. This feels like a good clue. I think it's a good clue. Well done finding a friend in there. And we're apparently all famous for the blue boat. Good job, Enid. Good job. Thank you. I do think it is time to maybe move towards this warehouse and at least put eyes on it. Agreed. I'm... I'm a little scared. As you should be. It's true, you've gone from a life in the Feywild and come out here into a life where every moment is mortal danger. There were, I'm proud of you. There were dead people on the street. Did yeah, you see that? I did. I tried not to look. It was quite tragic. Uh, even if they were bad people, Shouldn't have to die in the street. Seems like the dead were mostly Zentrums. Seems that Xanathar's one fight. But I doubt that's the only one. What was our friend? The half orc? Yagra. 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 I suppose if we go in this warehouse we could say we're just looking for a good friend. Absolutely brilliant. Maybe we were concerned. We can, I think it would be all right to tout our own deeds a bit. I gave us some gold, we can say we're a patron. We saved her from the Xanathars, those savage beasts trying to beat out a noble thieves guild. Because we did. It's not even a lie. Well, thank you, Devin. Second divine inspiration from our friend Devin Utilitas. The entity known as Devin. (laughs) You have received a gift from the entity known as Devon. Would you like to accept? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as you all find your way to Candle Lane, not far from uh, from where the skewer dragon was, in fact, gloom envelops the narrow alley. It's as dark as a dungeon here, and as odorous as one too. As you all are standing. Looking down, peering, you hear a window open. Splash! As some human excrement, or perhaps dwarven, splashes into the street ahead of you. Nearly every street lamp in this alley has been smashed. The only light that pierces the darkness is a faint flickering from far down the lane like a distant candle. And as you continue down 
Kendall Lane. You see that the road is actually getting narrower and it's slightly climbing. And as it does, the area around it does not climb. So it's sort of on an incline and the buildings are built alongside it and then have a like second, like a lower level. Like a so basement. imagine a house, right? Yeah, with an entrance with a basement that opens into a backyard. Does that make sense? Like street level is high. Mm-hmm. And the bottom is now at the like ground level. The street is just raised. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. I think so. A house built into a hill. More or less. Yes. Yeah. And as you all reach that faint flickering candle, you can see it. Uh, a ramshackle two-story warehouse, and you immediately notice some thieves' camp carved right into the street post itself, and it has the word recruitment. Hmm. Anyone looking to get recruited? No. <laughs> Very stalwart. Once you join, you don't get back out. These are not the friends that you want to make here. These are not the friends. They're not going to let us in unless we're being recruited. We're looking for Yagra. And then we'll be surrounded? I already see where this is going. The game's getting quite a bit more dangerous if we're joining the Zentarim. And it's not like we're humans where we can just hide. We're all blue or green. Sometimes I'm another color. Sometimes other colors. I think it, we should quickly establish right now how we're going to get around being recruited. This is the recruitment center. Right there. So the right there. I doesn't say recruitment. It does. No, probably secret languages like the two of yours. Um... I don't understand why they would not like it if we were checking up on someone's life we saved from their opposing force. I can already feel that they're going to be very convincing as to why we need to join up with them. Probably very secretive of what they're doing. Let's play with that plan a little bit. We're a new adventuring party. We saved one of theirs, and we're shopping around thinking about a guild to join, though we're not making any decisions just yet. I don't know it's too much shopping. Well, in this case, it's a bit non-committal, but we'll learn more about them. Say we're looking for Yagra, if she's here, we speak to her. But we were impressed with her fighting. We thought an ally like that might prove useful in our own endeavors. Maybe that we don't want to join up, but we definitely don't mind being an ally. Could be that. We keep it as abstract as we can. We also don't have to go in. We could just watch. We could turn back now. Look, Enid's got goosebumps. If we turn back now, where do we look for Flume? If we do not find Flume, how do we find a second job, knowing that we fluked on our first job? We need to find him. It's his best friend. Very best friends, I should think. All right, let's do it then. I won't talk. I won't say anything. I don't believe you. <laughs> He's strong and silent. I see. As you all stand looking at the warehouse, there is not a peep. You see a front door where you're looking and a window that seems to have been painted on the inside. You can see a couple specks of light kind of coming through that doesn't seem like a curtain. Down below, again, you can see that the ground sharply trailed down to a bottom story in what looks to be a fenced-in yard. If you two should lead the way if we are... I'll lead the way. I'll be right behind you. Make sure you don't look so green. Not in color. Yes, no. You look tough. Not that you don't already, but meaner. Meaner. Maybe more s- Getting close. Skulky yes. like. You're ready to just rip somebody's heart out as you've ripped mine out, metaphorically. <laughs> I apologize. 
I will return it shortly, I think. Keep it. I'll I'll um I'll use mage armor. <laughs> okay. What color is your outfit? Mine? Yeah. Um, it's like a um like an off white with like gold embellishment. I have a black like hooded cloak in my backpack that I'm gonna give Eamon to okay. cover up with. Just so you're not so bright. Okay. All right. Yeah, you're sort of like oh, okay. <laughs> you just look so innocent and sweet. I, I just don't want you to get hurt. Do you have a dagger? Uh huh. Okay. I'm going to move you. I have three daggers. Okay. Oof. My mom. <laughs> I'm interested. I'm, I'm going to move one. Say more. <laughs> one to the front, and I'm going to be like, now I want you to just keep your wrist resting on this dagger. Make your eyes squint like this. Good. <laughs> But just be looking around the entire time as if you're ready for danger. Or if you're not quite sure of this place. <laughs> well, actually, remember that. S- Do you remember the smell when they uh, threw the bucket of piss out? Mm-hmm. Make your face crunch up like you just smelled that smell. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, and you all walk up to the front door. And I'm going to walk up. Stealthy stealth. And you you try the handle? You walking up by yourself or with the whole gang or They'll be behind you, but I'll head it. Okay. Have a little bit of a little bit of lead. Okay. Uh go ahead and roll stealth for me then. Oh okay. how's that twenty? Yeah, that's, do? that's pretty good. Okay. With that, you get up there completely silently, and I'm not even gonna make you roll for it because you're rolling at twenty. You hear voices on the other side. Nothing out of the norm, out of the ordinary, but you just you hear some voices. What do you do? I feel like it's safer to probably, like, do, like, a knock that's, like, the basic thieves knock. Okay, yeah, you do, like, Just imply, yeah, like, I'm a stranger, like, but... <laughs> whatever, yeah. yeah, whatever that version is. As you do that, you hear the voices stop, and you hear some shuffling, and then you don't hear anything. Oh, uh, what was the name again? Igra? Igra? Uh, Yagra. Yagra? I didn't know one ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna write it on my forehead. Uh... Yagra? Nothing in response. I'm gonna lean in closely. Is nobody at the recruitment center in the center of the day? Maybe they only recruit at night. Oh, thank you guys. This is a combined roll from, uh, I can't pronounce that, Acellus Sind? Tell me if that's correct. And also our friend Material Components. Thanks, hey, thank you guys. Thanks, y'all. Probably won't need them. Someone's definitely inside. Someone's definitely gonna need those dice. Well, here's an impasse. Do we force our way into a thieves' guild? That doesn't seem. I mean, I've never done this. That's not safe. And um, it might be a bad idea, but I. I don't think that you should do that. The clock is ticking. My name's Nami. I saved her life earlier. Gave her a little bit of gold. We're about to enter, unless someone wants to let us in. Everybody roll perception. Ten. Sixteen. Seventeen. Twenty-one. All, right. all three of you, and Nami, you're just like, you've said it and you're waiting for a response, and you hear something, but it's not as clear. You all hear a... <laughs> and then silenced. And you hear it, you just couldn't make it out. You're like, did you guys... I think we may have found it, my dear. I think it might be time to kick the door in. I'll just open it. I'll just pick the lock. Oh wait, there were two more from Zombie. Jeez, oh thanks guys. All right, you guys have five. Okay, you're gonna pick the lock? Yeah, Mitchell. Go ahead and make me a, uh, so add your dex and your proficiency bonus to it since you are proficient with lock picks. Plus two and then I don't know my proficiency. Plus four, so you'll be a plus four. 14. Okay. I mean, it's not a very good lock. You're just like, all right. And you kind of find the tumbler easily, kind of click it, and door slides open silently. And you all are right over there. Here. Yep, right on the other side of that on the other side of that door. You're in a small little entrance foyer, and, and you know what? Just you know, hey, Liv, can you move that plate? Because I'm going to go to the battle. <laughs> you want me to move my cookies? Yeah, move, move your cookies. I mean, okay, move those yeah. cookies. Move them, move them, move them. Yeah, I would have 
let uh, Hyderion in front of me. I could probably after you as I drew a rapier. Right. Yeah, that's there right. There is everybody up in the up in the top corner, and there is another door in front of you now. You're just in this little entrance foyer. You can see a door to your right that's that's cracked and it looks like an office. You can see like a, a couple of desks, and there you see two desks kind of in the corners of the room to your right. I clock again. All right. Go ahead and roll it. No problem. Again, you just kind of twist it, slide it open. And what you all see before you... <laughs> Oh, slick, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know where it went. Never it's break hilarious. into a thieves' guild yep. coach shop. Yeah, coach just failed a stealth check. <laughs> um, here is what you all see before you. You are on that, which is the upper floor. This is the lower floor. That all around there is a balcony looking into the lower floor. These dashed lines represent the balcony on the above floor. Gotcha. These are the stairs between the two levels. And you can look down into this wide open room, and these are supports supporting the balcony. Does that make sense? Everybody Um, get that? mm -hmm. That over there is a huge crane. It's a huge wooden crane. This is top floor. This is bottom floor? Yes, ma'am. What's this? That's another room on the top floor. Oh, okay. And these are a ton of crates. Some of them have ropes tied around them, which can be manipulated by that crane over there. And you all don't see anything uh, so from your vantage point outside. at this point. That is outside, okay. correct. That's the yard. I'm going to go into the crane and yell, get away from her, you bitch. Nice. I love it. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, from where you guys are looking now, you can't quite see down below yet, other than you see a handful of crates. You'll have to come in and get to the edge of the balcony. Balcony's got a low wooden railing. Everything's pretty scuffed up. The place is pretty dilapidated, but there are crates and barrels all over the place. Do I see any more markings? Not here. Not yet. I'm gonna skulk along the wall. Okay. Go ahead and roll stealth again. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ten. Same. Pretty good. Uh, Pretty I, good. Will, I will give this to to Nami. She okay. uh, great. She took the uh, took the old initiative with her with her bud Tomas. <laughs> Tomas. <laughs> Tomas. <laughs> yeah, nice job on that. Uh, you try to skulk along. Go ahead and put yourself where you would. You know, you kind of head out ahead of everybody. Um, and I will tell you what you see. Where does everybody else go uh, in relation to Nami? I'm gonna wait for Whistler to do something. I'm just okay, gonna follow his lead. Hadarian would probably follow. Oh the, my oh, gosh! I, I sticky tack him down. No, like, <laughs> Hadarian would probably quick. follow Nami pretty closely. Okay. Uh, in fact, you all make it out there, and you look down below, and Nami and Hydarion, what you all see on the bottom floor, amid some of the crates, are numerous pools of blood that look dried. There's just like. The, the dark red stains of blood. Can I get the two of you to please roll perception for me? Eight. Good. Uh, seven. Y'all okay. can't roll for shit right now. Thank you. You all are actually not surprised because I rolled a one on my stealth check, but as you all are peering down, you see uh, five bandits from below peek out from behind some of the crates with little hand crossbows aiming to shoot at you. With that, can I please have everybody roll initiative? Sure. Oh, good. Uh, there are two bandits actually on the upper floor in this room here, if you would, just behind those two crates there. Mm. And recall that this is below you, so we're measuring from here to over there. Uh-huh. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do some initiative, everybody. Woo! Combat time. Let's go round the horn, Nami. Nine. Great. Enid. Five. <sighs> We're rolling pretty good so far. Uh, how about you, Whistler? Uh, 14. And Hydarian? 5. Oh my god, you guys are terrible. What's your dex? Higher than yours. Okay. Is it? <laughs> plus 2. Oh, okay. I thought you were a strength low dex. So you're a plus 1, right, Lid? Mm-hmm. Well, unfortunately, friends, 
they seem to have the drop on you. And with that, the three down below have little hand crossbows. They are in black armor. Um, No, they are not in black armor. They're in brown, like, leather armor with with capes pulled back. And on one of them, you see the sides of his hair are shaved, and you can immediately see four eyes tattooed on the sides. Recall that you thought this place was Zentrum. Yeah. Okay, hand crossbows at the ready. They do not have advantage because they did not surprise you. The first one is on you, Nami. Uh, What's your armor class? 13. That is a miss. You guys are also getting a little bit of cover from the the railing up there. This one pops over and shoots at... Coach, roll me a die. Low high. Ooh, shooting at Hydarian. Misses again. These balls just... They kind of slam into the wood ahead of you guys as you're sort of ducking and splinters come flying out. This dude also takes out his crossbow, takes aim at... Raven, roll me a die. Any die? Any die. Any you're two, low. Two. Mm, one. Okay, and he shoots at you, Nami, and your armor class again? 13. That is a miss thanks to the armor of the... or the additional armor class of the banister. Um, yeah, you all sort of duck down as... These bolts just slam into the wood. That gentleman, if you would please, Lydia, move him uh, six squares closer to you guys. Can he move here? Uh, you can just go diagonal around it. And he will also be taking a crossbow bolt shot at Coach. Roll me a die. This one's coming at Nami. And misses again. <laughs> These guys are really, really good. Uh, this guy will also move six that way. Right behind his mate, and he will shoot at you, Hydarian. Mm-hmm. Also misses. What the hell? Okay, you just see these guys come running out, and they, they're, they've got rapiers in one hand, and they're firing these little hand crossbows just as they're sort of uh, uh, quickly running at you. Whistler, with that, it is your turn. You you kind of just hear what's going on, but you clearly see them ducking and splinters kind of showering from the uh, from the railing. Okay. Uh, if I get here, would I see? Would I see them? If I was uh, yes, here? yeah, you okay. definitely can see them there. <clears throat> uh, all right. Well, I will call out. Like, Nami, you're like the wind on the high seas. You have a bardic inspiration. And then this one right here, I will uh, viciously mock. Viciously mock him? Okay, uh, it's I a... will, yeah, it's a wisdom save, 13, but I'll be like, so far from your own guild, what a mistake. I'm afraid it. Uh, actually, it's, it's a 13 to be. Yeah. Uh, he kind of looks at you and he's just like... <laughs> Only mistake made is yours. Uh, that is Whistler. Nami, that means we come to you. <laughs> Opportune moment to eat a cookie. Mm-hmm. Recall that these dudes are down below. And those dudes are up on the top. I'm going to... Um, there's like a... If I duck down, they can't see me. Uh, they can see you, but it, it's like railing. It's like wooden railing. So, so it'd be harder to attack. It'd be, yeah, it'd be harder. Yeah. So I'm going to duck down. Is it dark in here? Not really. It, it's lit by a couple of torches. And it is daytime, and there is, uh, this, this is a huge, like, door window down there. So mm-hmm. there's some light streaming in there. It's dim, but it's not dark. There's, like, nothing for me to hide behind. Uh, there are crates and stuff where I've drawn them, but on that railing, no. Mm-hmm. It looks like it's been kept pretty clear. I mean, you can hide behind the railing, but, like, an uh, actual hide check, it would be nearly impossible to do. Because you can't completely, you can't break line of sight. I'm just going to duck down and hold my action. Okay. I'm going to take the dodge action. Dodge action, got it. So disadvantage for anyone attacking you. Hydarian, it is you, my dude. So when Hydarian shoots his crossbow, he's not going to be aiming to kill He's going to be aiming pretty much... Can't do that with a, with a ranged weapon. A ranged weapon? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, you can do it with a melee weapon. Ranged yeah. weapons, you can't. Well, that's just poopy. Um, well. <laughs> you do have, like, a big harpoon yeah. crossbow. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to just try to, like, knock yeah. him out. <laughs> oh, got him in the head. Um. <laughs> oh, man, it's hard. <laughs> hmm. Hello? I guess we'll just... <laughs> 
He'll he'll try and step between <laughs> the two shoes. on the stairs and his friends in the doorway right there. Okay. And take out his Lydia, can you help him? Yes. Like here? No, he'll he'll engage them, but he'll okay. be between the two of you and take out the short sword. Okay, and, um, gotcha. You can running, draw your yeah. short sword as you do. Engage that first one there. Oh, good. The dice have been good, but may I remind you? Do it. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, that is a hit, my man. There we go. Um, it's a short sword, D6. Alright, so uh, five piercing damage, and we're looking to incapacitate. Another. Okay, got it. Uh, okay. You you slash out, he kind of draws a rapier at the last second, and kind of rakes his arm, and he ah, kind of falls back, he's holding his crossbow in one hand, rapier in the other. Uh, it looks like you hit him pretty good, but he's still up and active. Can I inspire Coach? Of course you may, of course. That's I have why found there. your actions tonight, Coach, to be so inspiring. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'll go cool. ahead and um, do you have one? Mm-mm, no, I'm feeling very uninspired. How inspired? Wonderful, wonderful. Enid. Because she's your best friend. Yep. And with that, it is Enid's turn, just in time. Enid doesn't understand combat much, so she's just going to shoot that guy with a firebolt. Okay, you would not be able to see him from where you're at. If I step here, can I? I don't think so. Uh, yes, but he'll have he'll have pretty good cover. That's cool. the wall. Yeah, I'm okay. fine with that. I'm giving him bonus armor for cover. Tight. He didn't need it. That is a miss. In yeah. fact, you shoot and it just slams into the wooden wall of the of the warehouse. Did it catch on fire? It, it didn't, but it looks like some embers kind of burn for a <laughs> second. It blackens a little bit. Cool. It is the enemy's turn, and Hydarian, these gentlemen both. Oh, swing. I wanted to move back over here. Okay, cool. They both swing their weapons at you. Oof. What's mm. your armor class, my man? Mm. Okay, that was two hits, as a matter of fact. I like it when you roll the die and then they go their separate ways. <laughs> then, you know, the dice C has been part. You take nine points of damage. As you rush in with your short sword, and they suddenly they just start ching, 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 and you just see Hydarian like, ah, kind of, they're just kind of nipping at him with their, with their light little blades. Uh, these two gentlemen, meanwhile, continue to find their crossbows. Now they only have one clear shot, and that is Nami. Here's the first one at disadvantage. That's a miss. Second one with disadvantage. That mm. is a miss. And this third one, he actually starts running towards the stairs. Six. Uh, he kind of squeezes past them, and that just gets to here on a dash. And with that, Whistler, it is your turn. <clears throat> okay. All right. I will run out and be like, "Don't worry, my beauty, my protector. I shall protect you." I will use my bonus action to healing word. Hydarion. Okay. In an almost sweet infernal, just four four points. Cool. Hope you like use mouthwash before we play. So, coach. Uh, coach like, likes smelling. Like, coach moments. likes. We play a game where coach tries to guess what Sean had for dinner. <laughs> um, we play a game where coach smells our bread. <laughs> And then, my favorite, <laughs> I will choose to non-lethally, but I will pull out the rapier and go cool. on this uh, mm. dude holding the bag. That uh, is a hit, my friend. That is a hit. So that is a D8, right? D8. Uh, that is five points of damage. All right. With that, how do you non-lethally take this man out? I will... I will cut his cheek so that it's bleeding, and then he will just kind of on the hill, just All right, yeah. Just very dexterously, like a slash and follow throughs with a, he kind of, his eyes roll back in his head a little bit, and he collapses to the ground. Nami. Uh, what does that crane look like? Like, is there a thing hanging down from it? Or yeah, is there so, a thing going up? So it's essentially, you see these pulleys, and it's got this all this rope coiled up, and then it kind of hangs out, and then there's rope hanging down from it with a big hook, and that's kind of hanging pretty much down to the lower level, where it looks like it could be manipulated to connect to something. The rope reined in and moved some of the large cargo. 
How heavy is it to move, do you think? The crane? Yeah. You you would not be able to move the crane. No, no, no. I meant, like, manipulate, like, the... The police system. Oh yeah, I mean, I think the police look like they're pretty easy to, to like, kind of Could a mage hand do it? Um, good question. Yeah, I think so. They're, it's probably pretty well machined. Although this place is pretty run down, there's a chance a mage hand would do it. I'd okay. give it, I'd give it a fifty fifty chance that it needs more weight. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you see, it kind of the arm comes out, and there's a rope that hangs down to the floor of the bottom with a metal hook on the end. Okay, just keeping that in mind. Um, I'm going to. S- Run behind the crane and just hide behind it. Okay. Another dumb Staying as well. So that's like, my movement. Like yep. here mm-hmm. or here. Whatever I get on my thirty feet. There. Cool. And dodge. Okay. No problem. You yeah, you're kinda staying low as bolts are just <laughs> like sticking into the wood around you. Hi Darian. Mm. Heidi. Feeling good in the middle. Heidi, Heidi, Heidi ho. Howdy, 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 ho. Thank you, both of you. Coachy, 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 go. Coachy, 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 go. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, yeah, you know I'll we're, repeat anything. We're doing this. <laughs> All right, that, we'll, we'll revisit that. We're going to go ahead and continue his non lethal strikes at these gentlemen. Okay. Remember, these are not the, the rules of the sea, there will be penalties if we strike them down. And that's going to be a no, so we're going to re-roll that. Do it. Yes. That looks like a 14 to me. You got him. All right. Ray could read it? Yeah. Amazing. He's using dice I can read. Wow, good Thanks, job. Coach. Well, that's his only one. <laughs> yeah, that's his one die I can read. Uh, for four damage. Coach. <laughs> Go chi go chi go chi go all the dice that you can. All right, yeah, you kind of slash across him, and seeing the you know his mate in front of him kind of go down, he's looking a little more defensively, like slashing his blade, trying to counter your blows. Enid. Yeah. That's you. Really. Five ten. Ooh, shoot. I can hit him with the fireball, right? Again, heavy cover. Yeah. You've got movement enough. Is this could, a, can I move through here or do I, is that so, the door? So you could go out the door and go back in the door yeah. if you wanted yeah. Okay. I'll You're go. just like jumping out and shooting and I got it, back. I got there it, I got it. Okay. You're good. I'll, I'll do that. You got a clean shot now. Got That's it. a hit. And uh, that is a D8, correct? D10 on firebolt. Yeah. Eight is shocking cross. That is six damage. Alright, Enid peers out. You just hear the sizzling bolt. He ignites, turns towards the railing, flips off, hits the ground with a crunch, leaving behind the smell of burnt flesh. Yeah, but like, I didn't kill him, Paul <laughs> yeah. killed him. Yeah. Uh, but non lethally catch him on fire and send him <laughs> over the edge of a. I'm just saying, like, if, if he hadn't fallen over the edge, like, you could have extinguished yeah. the flames. Yeah, maybe. So, so he did? Oh, he is, he is dead, yes. Oh, good. <laughs> Whistler wall. <laughs> All right, this gentleman goes one, two, three, four, five, six to be uh, adjacent to Hydarian. Yep. He comes rushing up, short sword out, charges at you, Hydarian, and does in fact hit you. What's your armor class again? 13. Whew, boy. What kind of armor are you wearing? Good. Mean? Leather. Oh, just leather. Did you hear that? For four points of damage. <laughs> Damn Did not feel better. very good. He comes rushing, rushing up like you hear him up the stairs. And as he does, he's just leading with his short sword. Kind of dives into you. These two guys are, are a little confused as to where Nami went. They in fact turn, look towards you, and one shot is coming at Hydarian. One shot is coming at Whistler. You are getting lots of armor from the banister and floor there. First shot on Whistler. Whistler. <laughs> Probably still What's your armor class? Uh, 13 is my That day. is still a hit, in fact. Uh, you take three points of damage. And finally, another shot comes screaming towards you, Hydarian. And that is a miss, in fact. But you see one just right into your shoulder, the whistler. And then, uh, and then another one slams into the banister, shaking the banister from the, the, the power of the bolt. And they also start running 
Uh, right up the stairs. You can, in fact, move them to that map at the top two spots. Of the stairs or yes, here? Uh, they're right at the top of the stairs, okay. like that. Whistler, your turn. Actually, uh, scratch that. The last one does not follow him up. The last one stays back here, waiting for Nami. Here? Yep. He kind of takes a shot, and now is like watching in the direction Nami went. Speaking of which, it is Whistler's turn. Uh, almost skipped Whistler, sorry. Whistler will break the bolt. Just... Uh, okay, yeah. I will... I'm gonna... Hyderion, my love. Be as strong as the tides. And you will be inspired. Um, and then I will... You also have bardic inspiration. Don't what does that mean? You can add a d6 after you roll a d20, basically. Not on skill checks, but on attacks or saving throws. And then uh, I will turn to the other one with a bit more fire in my eyes. And be like, you are going to die here. Not lethally. <laughs> he, in fact, fails. All right. Takes one point of damage, big one, and, but he does disadvantage. a disadvantage on his next attack. Uh, yeah, his eyes kind of go wide as he looks at you, and he's like, "Beast, <laughs> beast." Nami, it is your turn. That's you. I am going to look at that one through the rails and just like laugh. All right. And be like, you "Can probably hit me if you come a little bit closer, you idiot." <laughs> And I'm going to try to coax him forward a little. Okay, go ahead and roll persuasion. You fucking dickhead. <laughs> you fucking dick. Whoa! 22? Uh, like, you do it, he's just like... <laughs> and, like, starts to take a step out. How far close does he... Well, it's he'll have to wait turn. for his turn. Okay. But you, you can still have an action. That can be an interact. Well, my action is going to dodge now. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're just, like, like peeking out and dodging. I'm just gonna be like, it's just you and me. I love it. Hi, Darian. Um, where did the second dude come from? I thought we kicked him off the edge. No, he came. Uh, he, he was non-lethally. I just yeah, I yeah. just put he him was, that he's there. Oh, that's the other dude I smacked. Yep. That's right. I changed my mind. No problem. I just realized that the thing I need to do, I need to do now. Okay. So I'm holding my action that if he gets within where this would drop, I'm going to try and make it drop the hook on him. Sold. I realized I didn't have it. Like, he no has problem. more movement than I thought. No, that works for me. Hi, Darian, your turn. Uh, we're going to continue trying to beat back this man from getting to my friends. Okay. Best friends. Best friends. That is a hit, my dude. Best friends. Best friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How much is that? That's eight <laughs> damage. He's looking pretty rough, but he's still standing. But his eyes are kind of wide, and you take the opportunity. He drives the short sword through his armor. You feel, like, the crunch of armor and then the soft sick of stomach. Pull it out. Blood pools down. Blood's all over the blade. And he kind of holds it and coughs, looking at you, uh, holding his blade. Enid, your turn. Uh-huh. <laughs> Fireball. She's tasting blood, and she needs more. I don't know what I'm doing. That's a hit. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's all you needed. <laughs> He's standing there holding his wound like, I ah, just. <laughs> <laughs> ah! And it just kind of collapses to the ground, burning. He is dead. Unfortunate. It wasn't me who killed him. <laughs> you can't prove it. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Uh, this guy, uh, having been coaxed by you, is like, just you and me. Takes his crossbow out, draws his short sword, starts walking Let towards you. Let me see ugly mud. And he, he gets to about right here, and why don't you make me a dexterity attack roll? No proficiency, because you've never used this crane before, so you're going to get a plus two. A d20, plus two. Plus my six? No. If you, if you, you can, you can, you can, can use it, the it after, but before the results are determined. Okay, before you do that, yep. <laughs> All right. Plus two. You got him. Go ahead and roll me a d10. Ten. 
Ugh. I always pick up my handies. <laughs> A nice big one. <laughs> But he looks up and he's just like, all right, and hits him and he kind of like drops to one knee. He's like, ah, ah, like kind of throws his crossbow on the ground. He's like, ah, ah, kind of looks up at you and tries to take his crossbow out and take a shot. I'm going to give him disadvantage on the shot in addition to his one damage. That's smart. Wait, so what do I get to use my bardic inspiration on? Uh, an, you can hold it. Yeah. You can hold on to it. Um, an attack roll, but not that attack roll. You, there was no need to because you already got him. Uh, he totally missed. He just. Like it slams into the the bottom of the railing and, again, and you know, like, hit. <laughs> and you're sort of now like pulling the pulley up. You dropped it, like let it, like you saw the little break and sort of, and the rope spiraled down, slammed into him. I'm probably quick with rope too. No, oh, I think you're an, an expert with rope. In fact, you I'm saw an the machine. Ra- yeah, you're, you're a roper. That's a big old roper. Uh, that man right there, having seen two of his mates burn to the ground, looks at you all and he's like, "All right, I yield. I give. I yield." I give. And the one down there is like, ah, what are you doing? Don't yield! Whistler, your turn. You're like, okay, I need you. He dropped his weapon. He dropped his weapon. Then you're going to back into that corner because you've been a bad boy. (laughs) I'm gonna go on. Uh... And then I will, I think Whistler had one of the healing potions, will give it to Hydarion. He hands you this purple healing potion. Thank you, my friend. Nami, it is your turn right now. You you clearly heard the other dude yield, and this dude is like, nah! Um... He dropped one of his weapons and picked it back up? Yeah, he was hit, dropped the cross. That's why I gave him disadvantage. He, like, scrambled to pick it back up and shoot at you. And what is... Is he wearing all this crap? Is he wearing no, armor? No, he's in leather armor. And he's in leather armor. He's got a, cross, a hand crossbow and a short sword. How far up is the... Uh, it's about 15 feet. 15 feet? Yep. Fuck it. I'm going to um, try to scale down the rope. Oh yeah, awesome! Like, I got badass you. looking. Like, I got you. With my shit out, like roll, roll acrobatics for me. I got like fucking hook. <laughs> yep. Rufio. Rufio. We're not allowed to. So not me. What am I rolling again? So I acrobatics. Oh okay. Oh, you I should did be, put should that be on pretty there. good at acrobatics, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, God, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't roll a one. <laughs> Fall flat on your face. Oh, there you go. 19. Oh. Nami, you have not yet drawn a blade. You see this man down there. You take a running leap, grab the rope of it, and as you do, you already know the, the pulley is loose, but it's got some it's got some hold. You sort of like slide down. Do you want to land right, in to- right on top of him or right in front of him? I want to land right on in front of him. Okay. Yeah, you just sort of... And I just a, kind of, like, take my sword and just kind of, like, as I land, like... Yeah, and there's a crate that you land on, so, so you're kind of above him, and he just kind of rests it on his chest, and he's just like, all right. <laughs> uh, you all definitely caught the, the sweet, like, she just runs, wraps her arm around it, slides down, hits it, draws her sword, like, in one solid motion onto his chest. I didn't see. <laughs> no, you didn't oh, see. That is my captain. I will... All right, with that, we're out of initiative, and these two gentlemen are your prisoners, along with one that has been uh, captured alive and two that are crispy critters. Crispy critters. What would you all like to do? And it's crispy critters. Uh, all right, well, yeah, I think we tied them up. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, shortly after you walk downstairs, before you tie them up, you hear, Coming from back in this room right here. I guess I'll put the map back on for a second. Hydarian, ain't it? I think I will take a look and see what is over there. Would you care to watch my back, friend? I'll watch it, yeah. We, I think we'd head over there. All right, you look in and you see a young man tied up to a chair. Clothes look pretty soiled, but like they were very nice at one time. He has got brown hair parted down the middle long about down to his down to the, the bottom of his chin and he's kind of looking at you and he's like hur, hur. he's got a gag and he's tied up 
I think I'd cut the gag off first with the sword. He's just like, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Who are you? What are your names? Thank you. Oh, dear gods, thank you. It's been two days now. Water. Does anyone have water? Please. Please, these uh, brutes. Yes. Don't give anyone your names. It might be a trap. Uh, you are going to tell me your name first and what you're doing here. He's like, you'll make no demands of me. My name is Rene Neverember. Give me some of that water. Here's your water, Mr. Neverember. Well, well. He's like, please untie me and make no more demands of me. Thank you for your rescue. Mm. You needn't worry about some trap. No trap here. I've been tied up here for two days. You're welcome for saving you. Thank you, yes. You're right, thank you. I'm gonna please my sweet brute, untie him, though we will have a discussion after we deal with the Israel. You do not leave here, but I will untie you. We have questions for you. He's like, of course, but I am not your prisoner. Let's make that very clear. Not you at are, all. We just want to keep you safe. You are not nice for somebody that we are helping. You're coming in and treating me like I'm one of them. I've been tied up by, for two days. We did not attack you. No, you did not. Yet. See? I'm talking about that general hostility. Sounds I am a nobleman, sir. I'm like, oh man, I think I will march in and be like, I am also a nobleman from um, I'm Prince Whistler. I will do a courtly, like, I see you and your status. He's like, thank you. I would return the bow, but your triton is yet to untie me fully. <laughs> You're kind of like still working on it. <laughs> All right, you, you do, and he kind of is like, oh, oh, thank you, Bob. Thank you so much. Forgive my irritability. I've been tied up here for two days. Oh, my God, these fools. These fools, my gods. <laughs> Got some dried fish in my pockets if you're hungry. He's like, I am. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, these damn really fools. Nice you. He, he takes one. He's like, even worse. What are your names? Uh, you're, you've tied up the other two now. The, oh, the they're two, right, yeah. The two prisoners they all, there. Wait. And they're all just sort of stink-eyeing you. You've, you've slapped the other one awake a little bit. Um, our names are better not uttered in present company. I would have been like, in yeah. Due, in due time. He's like, oh, of course, I understand. As yes. I said, Prince Whistler, these are part of my adventuring court, if you would. Ah, adventurers, yes. Lucky that you found me. Whatever, what happenstance? Funny you should say that. We are looking for a friend who is going to be this Best way. friend. Flute, of course. <laughs> These damn fools, they jumped us both. I think they think he is me. <laughs> uh, Poor unfortunate that bastard. That is rather unfortunate. Because you said... Uh, when he says that, you hear one of them, and they're like, Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Um, Wait, they, so he's not here? No, I'm afraid not. They took him. Thinking he was you. Thinking he was me. Gotcha. With your yes. last name. And they confused your clothes like that. <laughs> well, he does tend to dress in a style that the common folk may not be able to discern from true nobility. We separated immediately, or was this...? No, as a matter of fact, these were not the men that jumped us. Uh, their bodies are... you can find them upstairs. They've been stuffed in crates, I believe. So the dragging sounded like from down here. No, these are not Zinterim, I believe. They are um, Xanatha Guild, I think. Uh, I know, because when they attacked the Zinterim, I heard one of them say, the Xanatha sends its regards. Like, you go around leaving a calling card like that. They're so in the open now. They don't even fear repercussion. They're not hiding in the shadows anymore. I wish one would change their name. They're so confusing. Well, I believe it is best if we take these charcoals up and maybe hide them with the other bodies. Allow me to propose something else. Now, we may have burnt some, and that's not good, but that's not necessarily a disadvantage. I'm sure that 
this nobleman here is not going to tell the city watch that we happen to kill two Zen of the like, Oh, I, I will tell them, but you will be above reproach, for you are part of my official retinue. Isn't that correct? Absolutely. Wonderful. Absolutely. Then, Does that mean we're friends? It's like, um, well, uh, anyone who came to my aid, such as you did, sure, why not? We're friends. But then forgive my previous brashness. Forgiven, I understand. I know adventure as well. This was a case of mistaken identity, and I hope the poor boy Floon is safe and sound. They have taken him uh, yesterday, I believe. But as I've said, <laughs> these must be the juniorest of recruits, because I heard them, well, explaining the directions back to their lair. So, if you're here for Floon, as I expect you're not here for me, or are you? We weren't hired to find you, but soon we found that a noble was in trouble with Floon. Hmm. A legitimate noble, of course. Well, so Legitimate in some people's eyes, yes. Yes, we've, we've heard some rumors. Well, some people choose to believe those things, the Zentrum certainly have. I'll tell you what I know, if we're going to be looking for Floon. If we're friends. As as we are friends, yes. Part of the being a retinue is about being friends, so we've found a friend, it's okay. Good job. I'm confused, but... I'm, I'm Enid. Enid, hello. Uh, Renair. Hello. Pleasure to I have a book, do you want to look at it? Nope, I do not. Ooh, get to that not right bit, now. my dear. <laughs> do you mind if I ask? Of course. What were... What were you doing at that seedy place? Oh, well, old friend of Floon's. So you're friends with Floon? Yes. Are you also friends with Bolo? No, I'm not friends with Bolo, but I am friends with Floon. Good friend or, uh, or an ally? A peer? Uh, I would say Co-worker. more like lovers. Ah, never mind. Say no more? I totally understand. understand. Have no fear. We are vaults of discretion. Thank I you. think Eno would be like, aww. <laughs> <laughs> like, a noble with somebody who is not a noble is not looked kindly upon. Yes. Well, I do hope the poor bastard is all right. Anyways, you should make haste to find him if you can. I'll tell you what I know. Please. And I'd be more than happy to accompany you, of course. The Zinterim believe my father embezzled a large amount of gold during the Tiamat affair. They believe it had to do with the negotiations between he and the metallic dragons while he was still, of course, open lord before he was ousted and turned tail to Neverwinter as Laryl control. Uh, you are not up, you are not up to date on political affairs in Waterdeep, but we'll we We've heard that bit, at least. Of course. We will revisit that. These interim <laughs> were asking me about an artifact called the Stone of Galore. I know nothing of this artifact, I tell you truth. They believe it contains the details of where my father has hidden this vast fortune of gold. All of it, to the best of my knowledge, I say with absolute certainty, is not true. I swear it. Nevertheless, apparently the Xanathar had this item, this stone of galore, and was working out a partnership with the Zinderum. But he believes he was double-crossed, and the stone was stolen. And now... This warfare has spilled into the streets. I haven't even spoken to my father in two and a half years. He and I both decided it was not in line with my own political ambitions within Waterdeep, given his fall from grace. Unfortunate matter, it truly is. He has been besmirched. He's a good man. He seems it. Well, that is what I know. As I said, I overheard them talking about the directions to their lair. They said there are yellow signs in the sewers. I, I don't know what those signs are. They didn't say one way or the other. There can't be many signs. 
On the sewer. I think you're right. Do you think I could probably help find those? He says, a whirlwind 48 hours or so. Thank you again. <laughs> Jumped in the street, kidnapped, brought here, witnessed to a bloodbath as the Xanathar agents attacked the Zinterim agents. These are not Zint here. It's the Xanathar agents. Your original captors, did any of them escape and live to tell the tale? Not to my knowledge, to be honest. I wasn't exactly involved in the fight. I was kept back here, blindfolded and gagged. But I heard the bloodshed. The Zint struck me as professionals. The Xanathars, not so much. Not so much. Could ask them if they left any alive. Oh, I think we can have a good chat with our friends at the Xanathar's Guild. This is a bungle that you've done here. Is this is to, 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 to them. Yeah, he's just like... <laughs> I'm not going to answer any questions, if that's what you're asking. He <sighs> just asked a question. No more from this point forward. I won't be answering questions. Um, when we came in, remember when we were, you know, finding out about all the laws and stuff about Water Deep, if we wanted to stay for a long period of time? I remember something about murder being on there. Mm -hmm. If you still have that disguise kit, we could disguise these two, make it look like they're not whoever they are, call them back. I had thought we could give them as a gift to the Zenterum. However, if anyone sees us walking down the street with them, they're going to automatically assume. Agreed. I also thought we could just burn down the entire building and bring one of your bodies back. So does everybody feel like they're not willing to answer questions? <laughs> Make a persuasion check. I'll give you advantage on it. That's from everyone mean mugging and assisting. Uh, that's a 16. I'm a wisdom save. Oh, yeah. uh, as you're talking, he's looking at you, and he, you see him start to blink, and his eyes kind of well up. <laughs> he's like, I'll, I'll answer. I'll answer anything. Anything you want to know about. <laughs> so please don't hurt me anymore. Please don't hurt me. And the one behind him is like, Carson! He's like, oh, shut up! <laughs> I'll answer anything! Let me! Pick me the answer! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get down on my knees, like, real close and cross the street. That's a boy. This is like... <laughs> now, what questions do we have for these fine gentlemen now? Did any of the, uh, center and live to tell the tale? He's like, mm -mm. Killed them all. Every single one of them. Their bodies are upstairs. They're in the crates. The other, the crates are filled with uh, weapons and armor. Um, you probably take a look at it. Uh, there's, they've got everything for new recruits here. Um, we all, uh, we all got shiny new weapons. We kill, kill them all. In, in, in short, we killed everyone. What about gold? Talk about that later. Oh, I've got a little, little bit of gold in my pockets. Um, we ransacked the place. Wasn't much gold to be found here. Some on the bodies. Um, uh, 40, uh, 42 or 43 gold pieces. They're certainly all yours. You can take them all. Some are in my pockets, some are in their pockets, and some are in theirs. And it's just these two steaming bodies. Did you? Now, why did you come here? Uh, we was told um, to uh, to attack them uh, and to get the nobleman uh, Rene uh, Lord Never Ember, um, and we thought we did. Were you given a description? Um, we were told he'd be dressed nice. And there were two dressed nice. Yeah, I didn't make the call. I wasn't sure. I thought this pretty boy here looked too ugly to be a noble. That is not a nice thing to nope. say. Sorry. I mean, he does look, I mean, he looked less noble than the other one when we made the call. He was in um, brighter clothing. He's in the dark clothes that he's wearing now. We made the call. All right. 
He's beautiful. You're beautiful, my lord. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> please. Like, I see. Now, you're... We should be able to find your home base within the sewers. It's like, yellow symbols, uh, it's a circle, uh, ten lines coming off the circle, looks a bit like a beholder, like the Xanathar. I haven't seen him, but that's what they say he looks like. Uh, the symbols are uh, it's, uh, written in chalk, so they can be washed off uh, in a couple days. Um, they change the path all the time, so the people have a hard time finding, uh, finding the, the layer. Yes. Noted. Um... Why were you still here if you had the noble? Oh, the sergeant told us to... He doesn't say sergeant. He says, uh, the, the, the boss told us to, to keep an eye on this one and to keep an eye on the warehouse. Uh, uh, it wasn't my decision. I, I don't know. Um, but we knew that we had hit these interims, uh, one of their recruitment areas here in the dark ward, and we were going to hold it from them. Uh, reinforcements uh, could arrive at any time. Uh, probably won't, but they might. I should tell you, you should be ready. Uh, reinforcements could arrive at any time. There are patrols that come through. Uh, there are a dozen men, Shh. as you said, here. On the door, upstairs. And here, City Watch, open up! I'll be like, well, this is your lucky day. I also hate to break it to you. You three, well, five... You were the patsies, I'm afraid. So, uh, they left you here with no reinforcements, knowing that you would lose. It's like, ah, seemed too good to be true. And you hear the door upstairs get kicked in. And you look up the balcony and you see a stocky man with like white chops that like connect here and then like a thin kind of stash here comes leading the fray and behind him you see 12 city watchmen come rushing in with uh, shields and short swords like kind of uh, at the ready. And he looks down at the balcony he's like, what is going on here? I'm going to quickly, wait, the dude that said he'll talk. Yeah. There goes my ear. Does he have ear like, down. tattoos and stuff? Uh, no, not really. He doesn't? Mm -mm. Uh, I'm going to untie him and put my arm around him and hold him really tight. All right. <laughs> He's just kind of like looking up. Uh, and the, the, the guardsman up there kind of leans against the railing. He's like, I am Captain Staggart. I demand an explanation. What is going on? My lord. And you see Lord Neverember like, Captain Staggart. He's like, oh, my lord, we have heard that you had gone missing. He's like, what, what has befallen you, my lord? And the guardsmen kind of start filtering down the stairs now. And he's like, yes, I was, in fact, kidnapped along with a friend of mine. Um, a case of mistaken identity, I'm afraid. And Staggart's like, oh, that's unfortunate. I'm terribly sorry. He's like, these don't look like Zint. He's like, oh, no, Captain. Uh, these are Xanathar. There was a scuffle here, as you can see. Uh, but my new friends uh, showed up at just the right time and rescued me from a certain demise, so I would hope you could overlook any of the... He kind of looks... Captain looks at the charred bodies and is like, didn't see anything. And that friend was like, thank you, Captain. Will there be anything else, Captain, or can these fine folks who have been through so much be allowed to leave unmolested? He's like, Ladies, gentlemen, thank you for your service here. Keep the blood out of the streets. Absolutely. It was intended. It was unfortunate, but we heard the Lord downstairs, so apologies. All right, go on, get out of here. Take him with me. Oh, you try, and one of the guards is like, mm -mm. He cooperated. Yeah. He's the reason we helped. We'll keep that in mind. Are you sure? We're positive. Damn, I tried. <laughs> See, Staggart's like, Sorry, miss. Your new boyfriend's coming with us. Captain. I'll, um... Oh, go on. Yeah, before no, I'll, like, let him go, I'll be like, If you make it out, you owe us a favor. He's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's walking, and you hear his foot kind of splash, and you can look, he's just wet himself. Uh, uh, just as I pass the captain, me. Captain, there are three idiots. They were patsies. Like, I asked for nothing, but know that they're damned fools. And I'll be like, thank you, I'll keep it in mind. 
Magic use? Is that what burns those men? Afraid so. Have you registered? Aye, we did. But we incorporated. Was that not the same? There is a guild you have to register with. The Magic Guild, perhaps you've heard of it? Oh, the well, name is escaping me right now, give me one second. <laughs> God, what is the name of that stupid guild? Hold on. There we go. The what? He says, um, yes. The Order, the Watchful Order of Magists and Protectors. Have you registered? Mm, no. no it seems too Only been here two days. Before you go burning up corpses so that I don't have to be the one beating down your door. Go and register. Don't delay. Don't put it off. This is very important. You can find yourself in the stocks or worse. Especially if you have a penchant for burning up Zinterim. Xanathar. I don't. <laughs> Absolutely understood, Captain Staggart. We thank you for your discretion and your advice. He nods, and he turns to, to Renair, and he's like, My lord, I'm sorry, we've had this we've had this warehouse under surveillance for many weeks, but this is too much. It's, we can't stem the tide. There's too much blood in the streets. I pulled my men off. This was my responsibility, my lord. I, I do apologize. He's like, it's, think nothing of it. It's okay, Staggart. I know you've got your hands full. And they seem to have a relationship, but they at least maybe kind of know each other. They seem more like friendly acquaintances, not like old friends. They kind of continue their conversation as one of the guards kind of like steps in front of you guys like, all right. Like he kind of makes a nod like. Yeah. Not like what move? Like GTFO? Yeah, yeah, like GTFO. I believe that's a cue. Lord Never Ember, should we be able to find you soon? He's like, perhaps after the business you're attending to, we could meet up at the Yawning Portal. Thank you. We shall see you there. Thank you for your discretion. I'm sure I can find it profitable. I like profit. Staggart's like, I don't want to know what's going on here. Just please, my lord, make my paperwork easy. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> I think I should we'll head out. All right. You all head back out into the street. And where do you go? Can we take a quick break? We can absolutely take a break. It is 10 o'clock. Do you guys want to wrap up here or come back and have a little epilogue? We can also just wrap up. We're kind of at a good stopping point here. Should we stop here? I'm fine. Let's that. let's go ahead and stop here because the next bit, we're kind of going to roll into the next the next major thing. So let's just do that. Oh, guys, thank you all yeah. for joining us tonight. When we pick up next Sunday, they will be on the trail of Floon. Hope you guys are digging it. There's yeah. a lot to unwind. There's a it's lot good. of NPCs, a lot of factions. Uh, we hope to see you all Tuesday night for Chronicles of Peril and next Sunday when we return for Waterdeep Dragon Heist. See y'all then. See ya.